we going live anyway? Yeah, sorry. Oh, I, that's, I, fine. This that's, is... that's, that's fine. Let's start with that anyway. So okay. he, he looks at me, he looks around, he goes, he goes, hey, man, he goes, uh, can I get a selfie taken with you? And I go, I go, who are you? He goes, oh, I flew you here. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what? He goes, yeah, all wow. your work is really, really great. You know, so, you know, he takes, takes a selfie with me and then shakes my hand and then goes back quietly to his group of pilots. And I know damn well he didn't tell them anything. It's like, oh, did you know? Oh, yeah, I knew that guy. Oh, oh wow. just, just right. me off. Right. I get that all the time. Really? So, oh, wow. yeah. People, I'm, I'm like the, the secret girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about. Wow, that's one way to put it. Yeah, I know. Probably shouldn't have gone that angle, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, either way, if I see the secret boyfriend, it's worse. <laughs> right. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Secret yeah. friend. How about that? He, there you go. You know, like secret the, friend. those after school specials where the, the jock has a nerd friend. Yeah, you know, that they hang out, but you know when the other jocks come up, it's like, ah, get away, nerd. Right, <laughs> I'm that guy. All right, well, I well put. Right. We're very, <laughs> we're very pleased you're here with us today. Yeah, we I, are, Mark. Yes, we Seriously. are. Seriously, that was, uh, you know, that uh, actually blew me away. You answered back, like right back, and you said, "Yeah, I'd love to." Sure. So that's that's unbelievable. You know, that's now why well, is it? Get the word uh, out there. No, I mean, I've got to keep pace with uh, with David Weiss on on DITRH. Because hmm. he does crap loads of interviews, and most of them are hostile. Really, <laughs> a lot of people don't understand. He 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 has somebody that calls all these podcasts and say, "Hey, how would you like to talk to a flat earther?" It's like, "Oh yeah, I'd like to give them a piece of my mind." Oh. And so he has all these interviews where people are just coming at him, and it's like hmm. his job is way harder than mine, really? way way harder. Well, uh, I suppose we should start off by introducing everybody, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Oddcast. I believe this is episode eleven, right, Johnny? I thought it was 10, but either way. <laughs> okay. It could be 10. Uh, I'll introduce uh, our friend, John Lindello. He's a conscious student of the present, a lover of universal truth, honest exchange, and spiritual pride. John O, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Glad to be here, guys. We're happy to have you back for episode two mm. of the Flat Earth uh, Deep Dive that we're doing. I'm going to introduce Mark Sargent. Mark Sargent is considered to be, by many, one of the most public flat earth personalities. I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> we appreciate you being here with us today for part two of our dive into the flat earth topic with John Orlandello. And it's just, uh, we're all blessed and um, so happy that, you, that you're here to talk with us. This yeah. is supposed to be 2.0, so you're the guy... We need All right. Yeah. Yep. I gave you the real deal. <laughs> All right. Beautiful. All right. Let's dive uh, right in. I just wanted to mention a few of the places that people may have seen you, Mark. Um, the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. Right. Um, your uh, <clears throat> popular podcast guest and uh, YouTuber. Yep. The uh, what I consider a real. Uh, great work, the 10 part clues series on the flat earth, um, yep. which I, I honestly just recently watched the 13th uh, on the spacesuit, which uh, was really great. Yeah, my spacesuit challenge. I was hoping that they would kill me in a vacuum chamber. <laughs> Here I am. You have faith that they wouldn't try some trickery knowing what you know, yeah, brother. <laughs> well, I, I knew, but well, I, we can get into that. Sorry. I love that. Mm. I love that part. I think it's a great one. How can mm. they ever beat you with that, brother? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I didn't, I even gave up having them go into the chamber with me, which was, which was probably not the smartest move, but because you think, well, they're just going to fake the chamber. It's like, no, with $4 worth of materials, I could tell whether it's authentic or not. Mm. You know, a bottle of water because tap water evaporates in, um, uh, boils and evaporates in, right. in a vacuum chamber. Uh, a balloon, you know, just has a single breath of air in it. You know, just will expand and expand until it detonates. Uh, mm -hmm. But the big one's a bell. If it's not a perfect vacuum, uh, you'll hear it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the only reason you can hear things, sound waves travel through air. If there's no air, uh, <laughs> and there's wonderful tests out there where they they take a bell and they they ring it and then they suck all the air out of the chamber while it's ringing and it, and it gets quieter and quieter and then it's, there's nothing there. It's That's really awesome. Cool. That is yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I just wanted to kind of ask you quickly, how many interviews on this topic do you think you have done, Mark? I stopped counting after about 
400, I think. Wow. Because what happens is when you start doing enough interviews in a perfect world, I would, you know, I'm a, I'm a numbers nut. I'm a stat nut. So I would love to have, know those actual numbers. Mm -hmm. And maybe after I'm dead and gone, someone will tell me. Uh, but what happens is you run into certain situations where either you don't have the rights to them because there's a copyright issue. Once, if you do big enough interviews, they won't, the irony is they won't let you reproduce them on your channel because right. they there's oh. you know any major network uh international network um international ones uh a lot of times i can't put it on because it's in another language so they they translate it for me and then they uh dub it they, <laughs> they dub my voice or which is uh, like i've done two two russian television interviews and oh. I, I can't put them on my channel because the you know it's just me with a russian voice under, underneath it and then there are people that either just never get back to me for whatever reason. Mm. You know, I, I say, hey, can you send me the blah, blah, blah? And, and they, never, don't, they don't, don't hear from me. So I put oh. every, everything I can, everything I can reproduce, I put on, on YouTube. Mm. But yeah, there's, there's some stuff I, I can't do. And recently, uh, over the last two years, I, I, I know long answer to a short question. Um, recently, there's interviews I can't put on my channel because they talk about things that are now forbidden yeah. on YouTube. You know, there's wow. one of the yeah. biggest ones was obviously, because they changed the rules on me. My channel shouldn't even be around on YouTube. I was I kind of amazed one. that it's still there. Oh, I, I, I know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm stunned. You guys, you guys have no idea. Mm -hmm. I had, when they changed the rules and they said uh, medical misinformation is now uh, a community guideline offense, which is equates with hate speech. Mm -hmm. uh, I got 11 guideline strikes in three days because they started going through my back catalog. <laughs> oh, wow. I know. And I'm thinking, I, I, you know, like the, the movie, the henchman that gets machine gunned and he's still standing. It's like, oh, he's dead. You know, he's going yeah. down. And I didn't even bother going back to my channel. It's like 11 strikes. It's over. Mm -hmm. And uh, for some reason, somebody granted me mercy. And because after three, there's not even a, a slot to put the others. Mm -hmm. So one of the guys who was helping admin the channel, he calls me up 90 days later and he goes, your channel's, your, your channel's absolutely free and clear. Oh, so at God. no point did it ever go down, which was weird, but yeah, yeah, it shouldn't be here now. That's actually a lead in into the second question I was going to ask you. <laughs> yeah. What? Do you consider that the uh, flat earth movement is growing because of more people are uh, becoming uh, awa uh, awoken? Or do you consider it to be shrinking due to censorship? Uh, the censorship didn't, uh, let's do the second second question first, which is the censorship didn't really slow us down that much because we were already saturated in the market when it when they finally started kicking it. Don't forget that YouTube promoted us shamelessly, just shamelessly for three years straight. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just blatant. They, because, and again, their, their programmer, there's a wonderful documentary out there called... Um, Oh, social, the social dilemma. If you ever get a chance, watch the social dilemma and the, the, the one of the, you know, the programming, it comes down to one guy. There was one guy that was involved with things that are recommended for you on YouTube. He wrote that. He wrote hmm. that. Why are things recommended? And of all the topics, of all the topics, you know, thousands, and thousands of topics, he brings up one and he goes, well, if the average person that gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row, what do you think we're going to promote? <laughs> and it was true. I mean, wow. we, they, they are awesome. the biggest television network in the world and they're quiet, you know, but they, you know, a lot of their content's crap, of course, but then you can say the same thing about TikTok. And mm -hmm. they were, they were looking for binge topics. And that was, once they found us, they just ran with it and they promoted mm -hmm. us. There's this wonderful video of my channel where this guy, just some random guy, He's doing, a, a, you know, there's self-help videos and then there's people that go on and they say, hey, can somebody help me with this? I'm, I, and his question was, I'm trying to turn, change the settings on my recommenda re recommendations. He goes, for some reason, I can't get them to stop recommending Flat Earth. He goes, I, <laughs> wow. I just say, no, no, not interested, not interested. And it just keeps coming back. Hmm. And he didn't realize that we were basically hard-coded. So, it's sorry, that's the, that's just, so the censorship didn't, didn't stop us. What was interesting, you say, is it is it growing or is it shrinking? Um, when the whole pandemic thing happened, I'll give you a quick story. When when I went to the first Flattoberfest, we, we couldn't do normal conferences because the, the venue wouldn't allow us to do anything without masks. 
So we we had this conference down in, in the Carolinas uh, called uh, Flattoberfest. And I remember asking just an impromptu question to the audience. I said, how many people here are new? And like 80% of the people raised their hands. And, and Karen and I are like looking around going, what is this? Hmm. What it seemed to happen was kind of like Netflix. You know, people are like wearing out their streaming services you know, during the lockdowns because it's like, oh, what else am I going to do? You know, break break the Roku buttons. You're, you're mashing them down so much. Um, same thing happened with uh, the online content, all online content. So people were going down way more rabbit holes than normal. Not just ours, hmm. but everybody's. But yeah, we definitely. And we knew this because the Netflix documentary which had gone way down on the list, you know, because, you know, been watched, came back up and was back in the top 10 for a while. This is behind and, the curve? Yeah, behind the curve. And uh, and then finally, uh, in fact, just recently, just uh, not even, maybe not even 60 days ago, uh, it, it ran its full three years contract under Netflix. And so now it's just on Amazon and iTunes and crap like that. Hmm. But yeah, the behind the curve, heck of a, heck of an interesting ride there. If wow. you have any for it so we could say that uh the movement is growing oh hell yeah okay how could yeah. it not how could it yeah. not it, it would only not grow if there were some channels that could have shut it down right you know for every you know yeah, that's a good point we have some dedicated troll channels and uh, come on it's been the, the the clues are seven years old now yeah and the uh seven years old in february or last february and the you know of course there's there's channels like I don't know Simon Dan and and Professor um, Dave Professor Dave you uh, know dedicated troll channels that basically base their entire YouTube career on trying to troll us. <laughs> um, they if if we were we should have been shut down by now, which is why I I told people uh, even four or five years ago it's like look if you were going to shut it down you're going to shut it down in the first six months and it never ever happened. Right. You know, people people are suckers for the truth, and when th something resonates, it resonates. But more than that, science couldn't find a way. And I've told them many times. I've said, "Look, if you want to go against flat Earth, you've got to find a way to dumb down your theory of the universe that's easier than the flat Earth theory." Hmm. And they look at me, and they, and of course, there are their responses. Well, I, I, you know, we shouldn't have to. That's beneath us. You know, science is science, and you don't have to dumb it down. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you do, because the the math club. No offense to you guys, you know, the math club and the chess club and the audio video club, they weren't very big in yeah. school. They never are. You know, there's a reason. It's like you know the, the mm -hmm. physics club. Come on, uh, you know how many people are in there? So you, the people they're trying to address, it's just going right over their heads. And I knew that because of the um, right away because of the eight inches per mile squared thing, mm -hmm. right. Because again, you you ask somebody again. I loved watching people. It's like, okay, curvature of the Earth is eight inches per mile, right? And they're going, "I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you." And I go squared, and all of a sudden, you can see their eyes just, you know, five hundred yard stare. They're like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, just like what? I forgot everything from eighth grade algebra. I have no idea what you're talking about. And so, th th anything harder than that? So when when scientists, you know, try to it's like you know start throwing in this stuff. You know, especially like Simon, Dan, you know, and Professor Dave, you know, they, they keep throwing these, it's like, who are you talking to? Who is your audience? Yeah. I go, you're, you're, you're preaching to an already, you know, converted, you're not going to grab anybody and, and flip them over. Hmm. So. They say that the truth is like a lion, right? It doesn't. Yeah. It, 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 yeah, it defends it itself. It Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's true. And, and come on, the, the, and the what i've told people is i said look the reason why it did flat earth and i didn't invent flat earth obviously the reason why flat earth has done as well as it has is because it is we have now created a fairly comprehensive definition of the solar system and universe that's easier to understand than the current model hmm. and way way easier to understand i mean the the numbers we've compressed it down you know we somebody said you know we've turned the universe this giant universe into a studio apartment that's like yeah that's pretty much and people can people can grasp it they get it you tell you know you tell somebody oh you know give them the speed of light equation or you know it's like oh we'll talk about trillions of miles or things with so many zeros it's meaningless to them we have mm -hmm. we have no even when for example sorry real quick which is we just to explain the speed of light to somebody we had to come you know usually we do miles per hour but the number of that number is too high so we have to go down to miles per second just mm -hmm. so people can kind of get it 
Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you say yeah. you know 186,000 miles a second, that's still ridiculous. But if you try to do it in, in miles per hour, which is like 720 million miles an hour, how cow? Right. What what do you, what can you compare that to? And not only does it get rid of all those zeros, like you're saying in this math, but it also is harmonious with so many things that people may be into, whether it's language or whatever aspect of life that they're into. Our our understanding is harmonious with that, even if it's yeah. music, whatever we fit into that in a more present reality than the other model, which may be more astronomical, but it's it's disconnected from our reality on Earth. We can't even perceive it from Earth. So yeah. once you start learning things like that, you you can look at it and say, well, this is this has more reason to be appreciated from my apparent position. This is true, whether they want to redefine it or not. This is still true from my apparent position. Yeah. And and to your harmonious point, we have had a lot of people that have gotten gone into the spiritual side of things mm-hmm. uh, because it gives if if the world has been shrunk down to basically a building, mm-hmm. then it was built and it was built for you, for, you know, for a very specific reason. One reason I'm not going to say I'm not that arrogant. But a lot of people, you know, gr- grab onto that and they don't feel alone anymore. Beforehand, it's like, oh, yeah, by the you're this little accident on this tiny little rock gets snuffed out at any second. How mm-hmm. you're even sleeping is beyond me. Mm-hmm. And now, you, you know, now you have purpose, which is why, by the way, we have um, <clears throat> to me, so many more um, women in flat earth than any other you know, conspiracy. You know, when yeah. you go to conferences and, and meetups, there's, there's a number of women there. And I ask, it's like, why are you here? I go, it's usually a male dominated thing. You know, people talk in whispers like Batman and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, no, it's, it, she goes, well, she or they, they, um, uh, they always say the same thing, which is, yeah, it's, it's like a message of hope, mm-hmm. you know, flat. There's nothing sinister about flat earth. In fact, mm-hmm. mostly because we had nothing to do with it. You know, every other conspiracy was usually man-made and, uh, mm-hmm. something you can hide in the desert where flat earth is more like the matrix. You know, the, the happier version of the Matrix, not not the one where Neil gets all punchy because you tell him, you know, it's 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 fascinating to me watching watching that. So anyway, oh, by the way, one more thing I, I should mention, I, I don't know if you guys caught this. The first we've been doing this long enough that the first uh, anti flat earth book came out. Hmm. So like like, you know, I was really surprised because Simon Dan or, or or Professor Dave, they could have written books on this several years ago. Mm-hmm. Like the, the woman that wrote it. Uh, it, the book's called uh, "Over the Edge." It was written by a, a daily. Wow, what yeah, a fucking title! Yeah, written dude, by they're daily, good. They're daily good, dude. Beast reporter, <laughs> uh, who went to the the Denver conference, then went to the Dallas conference and interviewed a, a bunch of people. It's basically the behind the curve in book format. Only they, you know, it was more. She she was going after the dirt, the gossip, the dish, and so like she dedicated an entire chapter to um, Mad Mike, which I found interesting. You know, I was like, really, Mad Mike, and 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 what she didn't know was that the documentary he was supposed to be in it. He was supposed to be in the documentary, but the team was worried. It's like, yeah, but what if he crashes? You know, and dies. <laughs> and, and it's like that. That'd be kind of like a bummer to, to the movie because they wanted to keep it kind of light. And uh, they were right in that case. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I hate that well, they have to personify all that stuff rather than make it about the actual information. I, yeah, in fact, that book, if you if you guys ever check it out, uh, Over the Edge, if there is no nuts and bolts in it at all. At all. It is mm-hmm. almost 90% mm. gossip. Mm. That is almost, mm-hmm. you know, and of course, you know, Daily Beast reporter, that's what she's going to do. And it took her two years to write it. And she wrote it during the pandemic, but uh, the the only thing she even talks about for her, I mean, talk about denial being the the first and strongest response, which was she will never be flat earther because she watched the sun sun rise and set every day. Oh. That's that is her argument. That is That's an beautiful. entire argument. It's like, and I sent her the di you know DITRH has got an entire playlist of sun stuff, hmm. you know, sunrise and sunset, and like I sent it to her and I said, look, agree to disagree. So. Anyway, wow. yeah. yeah, she does. She doesn't want her. Um, she doesn't want her reality shifted. That's why she. Wants no, it. and again, the peer pressure, powerful thing. Yeah. People don't. People don't want to. It's the same reason why. So we have so few scientists. You know, I, I've got some PhD friends, and I talked to them years ago, and I said, "So why is it? You know, I can't. I can't get any PhDs or masters." And and she kind of laughed because she goes, she goes "You got to be kidding me." She goes, by the time you are leaving your master's, going into your PhD, she goes, you have spent so much time and money in school. 
She goes, the only thing you care about is getting published and your peer group set. Meaning, you know, when you get into academics at a certain level, you have a certain circle of friends and they're all academics, right? And you all band together and, and you do these things. And, and the scariest word for them is ostracized. You don't want to be that person, which is why uh, uh, find, finding a, a PhD to go against us in any sort of debate is almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in a debate with us, one, mm -hmm. you know, one of our people, you have to knock us out, treat it like a boxing match. You have to knock us out in the first 10, 10 minutes. There was one recently. Um, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, That's right. Go ahead. Allegedly, Dave. Oh, who's he up against? He was up against um, a particle physics guy. Really? I haven't seen this one. It was good, yeah. Um, they're in an outdoor setting. It's being moderated by a Scottish gentleman, I think. And, uh, I, I will. I will have to check that out. Yeah, it's if, good. If the the reason is is because flat earth should won be too. <laughs> the, the what he won too. Of okay, course, I think. think. Yeah. And and the 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 problem that science has is when you get up to that certain level, you're academic, you're tunnel visioned, right? You can well, the you guys have heard the story probably, or some of you have, with that. Um, I was supposed to against go against a um, a physicist from Georgetown was being set up by a German television team, which we'll talk about a weird set of circumstances. And they said, well, sci you know, the scientists we talked to aren't very articulate. So we need you to come up with science questions. We will play him the video and then he will respond with video, basically just passing notes to each other. You guys are never going to talk, talk to each other directly because wow. it never works out well because they're so monotone. Apparently, when you get up to PhD levels, you're so tunnel visioned that you can't break out of it. And so, you know, journalists last them. It's so oh, blah, blah, blah. Is you think that's correct, professor? And all of a sudden they'd be like, yes, that yeah, is right. correct. They, yeah. right, that there's nothing there, which is why Bill Nye actually gets on television because he looks the part and he can talk, even though he's got a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Actor nuts. Uh, yeah. And so, but the, um, the, the physicist that I was supposed to go up against, I wrote five questions, which I'd sent off to a whole bunch of people. Uh, you know, five basic science-y questions, and he folded. He just said, yeah, we're, we're not doing this. This is not going to happen. <laughs> and the reason was is because we kind of like the clues are, and a lot of people in Flat Earth, we have kind of like a shotgun pattern approach. We'll hit you with all sorts of different things, but this is big spectrum of topics we can hit you with, but scientists don't <clears throat> have that big spectrum. They're very good at small, narrow windows, but everything else gets through. And they don't want to be that. So to answer your question, scientists will, uh, they, they won't address us because they're afraid that, kind of like Dave Murphy, they don't want to be the person in the room that, that goes, you know, because even if you went the distance with them, right, and it was a push, it shouldn't be a push, right? Because science should be able to just shut this thing down, and they never do. So why haven't they? I mean, come on, Professor Dave and, and um, Simon Dan have been around for a while now. You know, and you know, several years, and nothing. You know, they've changed nothing. I, I like think it's because they. Oh, sorry. Dave is not a professor, too. <laughs> well, yeah. Just so everyone knows, <laughs> I did. I but their their channels do have some influence. I mean, they do have a reach uh, because I was doing a uh, street activism in Belfast. <laughs> Got drug into that. Not by the way, not something I was looking forward to. It's like, really, you want me to seriously do flat earth activism on the streets of Belfast? It's like it's not gonna be in like the early evening, right? Because there's gonna be a lot of drunk people. And there are, but I didn't. It was in the afternoon. But I'll be damned if a Cy Man Dan, like two or three of them, walked up to me. And I was like, really? Out here? Really? So anyway. Well, I I was just gonna mention too, um, that, uh, you know, even on like Rogan, where uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was going to go up against, uh, I think it was Owen Benjamin. Eric uh, Dubay. No, go Eric, Eric Dubay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, my brain's like scrambled eggs. That's all right. But uh, yeah, that, that was on for a little bit. And I, I was really looking forward to that. But that obviously never happened. That yeah. was Joe Rogan taking a reach. Taking oh, a that reach. was never a thing? Yeah, no, it was never going to happen uh, oh. because, and he should have known this, but I think he was trying to see if he could trap Neil. So hmm. Neil does not do debates. He's never done one in his life. He's never going to do one that really? is not, no, 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 it's not his thing. He is a, he is a stage performer. 
Yeah. He is very, very good at what he does. In mm -hmm. fact, <clears throat> I have kidded that he could have done, he could have done anything. He could have done uh, self-help classes. He could have done, you know, just about any product placement you can think of because his stage presence, he's a mix between, I'm not being racist when I say this, he's a mix between um, like Bill Cosby and Sinbad. If you remember Sinbad from back in the day, <laughs> he's got that, he's got that snappy delivery. He's got timing and that's what he does. He goes up on stage and he's like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. science is amazing. And that's, I mean, he might as well be a jack in the box, you know, mm -hmm. da, 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 da. science is amazing. That's what he does. And then he goes off to the stage and, and, and he's done and he doesn't, you know, he's done. He, he gets a few questions in, in little interviews, but for the most part, he is a very, very, um, he has a limited, limited thing. But I, what I thought, what thought was interesting is there's only three media scientists out there in the whole world. All right. People don't get that. And that is, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, first and foremost out of America, Brian Cox out of England mm -hmm. and Michio Kaku out of Japan. Right. And that's it. In fact, if Neil died tomorrow, I don't know who would step in. I, he has no understudy, as mm -hmm. far as I know. And before him, there was only Carl Sagan. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch of young TikTok channels that they're like romantically fantasizing about the globe model. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. There's all these channels coming up, and they, they don't address any of the nuts and bolts, kind of like the article you, or the book you talked about earlier. But right, right, right. they're on there talking about like, oh, I saw the sunset, and isn't it amazing of how the globe is moving? And you could tell these kids are clueless, but they're being told, you know, this is the way to you know, get some cash. But You um, know, you want some, some subliminal stuff. Something I have noticed since, since I've done this is, because uh, I watch a lot of media. I absorb so much media. But when I watch tv and movies i am so hyper aware of it you, you you wait if you go back through movies if it's not a space related movie right because that's obvious if it if it's just any sort of any other television show there will be a globe in the background oh yeah in in some shot some mm -hmm. and it's blatant it's absolutely yeah. blatant and you're saying oh well you know in the classroom of school yeah sure i get that you know because there's globes in every classroom but why is there a globe on the top of the detective's office you know file cabinet why is there a globe in that doctor's office why is that billionaire have a globe sitting over there mm. and what I, I there was this little story i i watched uh um oh god it had to have been like four years ago where this guy was telling me about silent producers and what they do and you can do this mm. yourself if you want to any movie a lot of people don't understand the in the movie industry or television industry you can be a silent producer and you come in i'd like to donate twenty twenty thousand dollars to your television show and they'll take your money They'll be like, okay, what do you want? It's like, I would like to help set design this room. And and they say, okay, what are you going to do? You know, they think you might be do something weird. It's like, what are you going to do? I'm just going to add this and this and this. And they put, you know, three pieces and one of them's a globe, right? And maybe they'll turn down, you know, some pink flamingo or something else, but they'll always leave, leave the globe because it's generic. But like, fine, we'll take your $20,000. And you want even, you want your name on the credits? Nah, don't even bother. Right. And that'll be it. And it is an, it has been going on for decades mm. absolutely decades it's crazy watching it's like I, because again if you're in our community um you're hyper aware of it you, you're looking it's like holy smokes what is that doing and it's there for a long time yeah it's in the background it's it's almost subliminal mm -hmm. but it is there mm -hmm. so yeah but the 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 tiktoker well, who knows what it's going to be after tiktok i mean we've reduced the sound bites down down to so what is tiktok normally 60 seconds up to three they minutes. have up to three minutes yeah oh my mm -hmm. god yeah, it is just like really, and everything else is too long. Well, I just, the they're just trying to keep people, these young people, distracted from what I agree with you. It, it's this is truth is here. They're not yeah. going to get rid of it, and yeah. I think they just try and maybe for the next five, ten years. I don't know what how long they're going to try to keep us all ignoring what we all know is in the room as they have commercials about it with you on the Super Bowl. You know, so it's like. What a like a contradiction of things, but this is that double think that they've promised us was coming, you know, where yeah. these people can literally admit that we've been flat earthers and we, they know us well, but yet five years later, they've never looked into one thing with the frame of mind, like right. this might not be true. You know, the globe may not be true. And I think that's really what it comes down to. Even the best scientist who's a young man who really has a scientific mind and trains his mind and goes through schooling, he's never even questioned the globe from kindergarten. No. So every study he's done has only been with the assumption that obviously this is true. So he's never been trained to question any of it, even though he's a scientist who supposedly questions things. 
right? Yeah. And I think that's why when they go out into the field, they're just academia. They're not really science. Um, One of my crazy. most frustrating interviews I ever did was Canadian physicist grad students. I mean, the, 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 the ink was still still wet on their textbooks, right? And I had, it was a man and a woman. Well, they were very young. I mean, they had to have been maybe 20, 21. And they were regurgitating. You got to remember that they were so fresh on this. They were regurgitating entire paragraphs verbatim from memory. Mm. And it's like, what, you know, the, and, and there was no way they were going to snap out of it. You know, they, they were, you know, within months away of getting their dissertation or their PhD or whatever it is up in Canada. And it was, again, what you're saying there, it went, which is why I tell people, I go, look, I go, if you're talking to somebody about this topic, I go, if they have a master's degree in anything or higher, don't even bother because it's it's over they're 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 cooked they they their brain is so hardwired to uh don't forget you know the the, or, the orwellian uh, i'll do a star trek thing for you if you guys sound like could be in the sci-fi oh yeah uh, which is the 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 five lights four lights thing mm -hmm. you know which was there was this wonderful if you ever watch star trek next gen there was this great line where Picard was was captured by the Cardassians and being tortured, and he finally was rescued. And they were doing the whole five lights, four lights thing to mm -hmm. him, right? And beating him and crap. And it was this great line at the end, which most people didn't catch. And he was telling Riker, he goes, you know what? He goes, he goes, he goes the scariest thing wasn't, you know, waiting for you guys you know, to rescue me. He goes, he was, he was, he was at the end. He goes, I could see five lights. Right. <laughs> and, and because your, your mind will break into it. If you, if you are conditioned enough, the, the, you, you, you can't say it, which is why the, um, there's this wonderful video I put on my channel. Neil actually helped us more than he heard it when he was yelling, when he was making fun of the Red Bull jump and mm -hmm. saying that it was scientifically dishonest. He goes, no mm -hmm. civilian can see the curvature. He goes, you just, you'd have to be way, way higher. 103,000 feet. You can't see the curve. You know, that, mm -hmm. that stuff is flat. And which is interesting, I'll throw that at people and I'll say, you know, I've had thousands of people tell me that they can see the curve from an airplane. You know, they've seen it from a mountaintop or even the beach. Yeah. And I go, and then I'll send them that video. I go, so is Neil wrong? Right. I go, because he's the most famous scientist in the world. Mm -hmm. Is he wrong? And most of the people, they'll just, oh, I, 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 you're retarded. You know, they'll, they'll just go on yeah. down that road. And but the, the what I thought was interesting was those Canadian physicists, you know, because I threw it at them. They uh, they their line was he doesn't represent us, hmm. you know. Yeah. He, doesn't, he doesn't, and and a lot of people don't understand that he is hated in the physics community, absolutely loathed in the hmm. physics community because they're all hardcore scientists. They're doing the work and they're published. And he's, he's doing their dirty work, right? Yeah. He's covering up the sin they don't even know about on TV. That's what yeah. he's doing, right? Yep. Yeah, I that's mean, all that's all he's doing. Yeah. But they, but they, but they hate him because he, he, they, they. It's it's interesting because they love to get published. It's really weird, even though when they're published, maybe a hundred people in the whole world read whatever they published. And mm -hmm. Neil goes out there and he he can go down and sell tickets to just about any arena he wants and talk mm -hmm. about the same crappy stuff that first year physics students learn. And mm -hmm. uh, anyway, sorry, I'm off track. Well, you got it. Uh, well, I, I mean, maybe we're switching gears here, but uh, I would love to. This is just one of my questions I had. I, we can get into other stuff down the road, but you ever do any research on the Challenger explosion? The uh, that one picture that they have um, after the Challenger rocket exploded. They say that they're all alive. Oh yeah, well, you know we sent somebody to. Um, oh god, what was his name? We've got a video on that. Yeah, that's uh, actually on your Instagram. Uh... Oh, I, I, I didn't see it yet. Well, it's not on my it. Instagram. Just so uh, you know, officially, I only have a YouTube YouTube channel. Other mm -hmm. people run other things. I don't know what I'm on. Because well, I'm looking at you on Instagram, so someone set something up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm told, yeah, that's because in my, in my thing, I say, my videos are free to anyone. Do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, that come back to haunt me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, how has that, how is that gone so far, giving out your personal information? does it? Can it become uh, cumbersome? No, no, uh, and mostly because uh, I'm I'm older. I'm older, so I remember this. I'm not Gandalf, but I'm still older. Uh, where I remember that there's certain rules of trolls that have not changed since the 90s, mm. which is trolls still are 
scared to really come out in public. Yeah. So they rarely so uh they they won't spoof a phone number to call me most of the time. The only the only <laughs> troll calls I get on the phone are usually drunk people. Mm. I was like, ah, you're flattered, stupid, you know, yeah. you know, and then dial tone. Uh, well, and they, they rarely will even spoof emails. So no, my personal information has wow. not hurt me, which is, which okay. has been wonderful. Right. Uh, That's been, great. Yeah. My mind was, my mind was sufficiently blown when I called you, I called you before David did, um, after, you know, a bunch of IPAs watching the proofs, the flat earth proofs on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and your number came across the screen. I was like, "Oh my god!" You know, it's like, and I, I have to keep—I have to keep that number just for that reason. By the way, I, that number is from Colorado, and I had to drag. It was a landline, and I had to transfer it to a cell phone. I didn't yeah. even own a cell phone just to just to come out to Seattle. And uh, oh god! But but, uh, but how long out. did you brew over the clues before, like? Your process beforehand, I know you're into conspiracies, I guess, yeah. and things like that. How long did you brew on it? Like, we come from a background where some people that we know, they were kind of conspiratorial or, you know, those kind of things. And I actually had a friend that told me in 2013 that the earth was fixed. Yeah. And he was coming from a, a perspective that he was learning about kind of through Judaism and things like this. And, yeah. um, and I thought it was a pretty cool thing, but it was religious and I really didn't want to get into it. Um, and then when the flat earth came around, I was like, dude, this is really the fixed earth. You know, we call it flat, but it's, it's all about the fact that it's not moving and it's centered and this kind of thing. So I was wondering like the process that you went through before you came out with such a amazing set of clues. Um, it was, uh, the process was utter madness is what it was. I almost went insane. And by the way, I do want to answer David, your question about the challenger thing. I will follow your yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, that was just a, no, 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 that's fine. I just had to get no, it. No, no, but no, because I want to point it. people to that video because it's very important. Uh, mm -hmm. The one that we went out there and I didn't even tell the guy to do it, which was cool. But the process as far as doing the flat earth, because remember there was not a lot of content back then when, when I was looking into it in the summer of 2014 was sheer or well, i mean i was i'm stubborn i'm i'm a taurus born in april and and i'm i am a stubborn guy and so there was no way i mean you know i i looked at it the, the movie was was true in in that point i mean yes they fudged some stuff you know during the, the documentary obviously but this was absolutely true which was i was i was looking at it going no no it's stupid it's ridiculous i mean i know every conspiracy that's out there or have some inkling of the conspiracy that's out there and flat earth is just stupid. Hmm. And the more I stared at it, what I, but I, I may not be the quickest problem solver in the world, but I consider myself to be damn clever. And I was going at it from, cause I'm a lifelong gamer. So if I, mm -hmm. I, and I used to do game testing on top of it. So I will find oh. the workaround. I will mm -hmm. find the exploit and I'm going mm -hmm. at it from all. It's like, it's like holding on to a, a child's toy and I'm, I'm, going around immensely in all sorts of different angles, trying to go in over and over and over and over and could not figure this one out because every time I thought I had it, there was always uh, some loose thread that was that you could pull on. I'm going, nah, can't be. And then finally, again, I had this, this weird Jerry Maguire. I know I'm doing pop, pop culture references, but why not? It's a pop culture world, at least in yeah. America. Uh, where I had this Jerry Maguire moment where I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, you know what? I'm a, it's a safer bet to go the scale, the scales had tipped and it's a safer bet to go on the flat side and work the argument from there. Mm -hmm. Going from the globe side, it's I've run out of options. So I'm going to go right. on the flat side and see if I can keep the scale weighted down on that side. Mm -hmm. And it was the, it was the weirdest but up until that point, complete frustration and, and just going down, going down every avenue I could think of, the, the usual people. But the, the point was, is I had to answer all the questions that there was no way I was going to make a Flat Earth video until I could answer every question I could come up with from the other side. Mm -hmm. So I just kept flipping the, the chess set around and mm -hmm. saying, okay, what are they going to ask me? What are they going to ask me? What are they going to ask me? Mm -hmm. And when I got to the point, again, at three o'clock in the morning on February 10th, uh, I woke up and, and said, okay, I think I've got them. I think I've got all the questions. So now I just have to reverse engineer it. And I sat down. I mean, so weird. Wake up, take a shower. And I'm not kidding you when I said I had the paragraphs in my own voice uh, rolling through my head as I was taking a shower. 
to where I was some of the clearest writing I've ever had again, Jerry Maguire moment hmm. where I'm sitting down and I'm typing it and I am not backtracking. You know, I'm, I'm typing it. And it's like normally, you know, writing process, mm -hmm. you write four paragraphs, you delete three or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm just going dun, 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 dun. And when I'm done, uh, then I sat and it's like, I, I'm going, okay, well, better narrate it. <laughs> so that, then I just took the microphone and I started recording it. And, it's like, and I knew nothing about video editing back then. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then it's like, well, better come up with some images for this damn thing. So I just went on Google and grabbed everything. I didn't care if it had, you know, watermarks on it or not. Yeah. There's some that are in there, which is, just blows me away. Because I didn't even know. It's like... It's, because I I didn't even know you could pay for the rights for these things. And honestly, there was one company that called me like five years later and said, hey, you're, you use two of our casino slides. You owe us $30. It's oh. like, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Hmm. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I put, I pasted all that in. And then at the end of the day, I had clue one. And I'm like, okay. And then the next day, uh, I did clue two. And the next day, and I did uh, the first six clues i think in seven days and that slow you know got that crap out of my head because i couldn't sleep and then uh worked on a few more clues and and then again held my breath because i had no faith in it at all it's, it's like it's like right you know this because this seems like a logical safe move right put something on flat earth on the internet with all yeah. your personal information yeah <laughs> say, that is a... say come get me mm -hmm. and and but they, you were smart the way you presented it, where you you made it a clue, you made it something that you're not making a claim. You're showing evidence that we all could have in common in some way. I mean, there's a lot of you know. You did make some claims in the first clue. You even said one of the things that boggles my mind is you said uh, revealing this truth will cause a, a reset of our of our society. Yeah. You know, so I think that's kind of crazy. You said that in the intro of the clues. I, was I wonder worried. what was in your mind when you said that. I was worried that there were, you know, because I didn't know the math on this. Was like I remember talking <laughs> to a couple of people, and I said, I, "I go, there could be a small percentage of people that are going to flip out, right, and mm. just you know, start doing horrible things because of this. You know, they're going to do." I, I was using Matrix as a reference. You know, we don't free minds after a certain age right. because of bad things can happen. And I'm thinking, oh, this could happen. And it didn't. That's mm -hmm. the part that blew me. It was the opposite of the um, the Milgram experiment, if you guys know about that. Yeah. Where, um, you know, the scientists, a lot of people don't know this, is the science, the, the Milgram experiment is that uh, the, the perfect strangers will electrocute you to death if they can get away with it. Yeah, I've, I've seen that. What, it's what crazy. People, what people don't know is the scientists' initial projections were it was going to be less than 5%. <laughs> and it oh, turned out to be 60%. Yeah, right. Well every, over 50. And they're like, just completely wrong. Mine was the exact opposite, where it was like I was percent, you know, you know, thinking a percentage or two were going to, to lose it. And it turned out nobody did. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody. It, it, was, it was awesome. And because there seemed to be a calming effect to flat earth which is oh yeah you go through this weird try you know while, where the universe just implodes on you but then you're you're in a very deliberate world where it becomes a safe place so it's the universe, a deck of cards yeah you know a house of cards you know yeah yeah but when it collapses you you you're not yeah you're alarmed but then you realize like oh not so bad yeah you know it's it's actually not that bad a place mm -hmm. And, and I didn't, I did not think, I thought that, you know, given so many different personality types that eventually that would happen. Um, sorry, let me go, let me go real, real quick back to your challenger question. Cause I think this is a very important thing that you asked. Okay. So the challenger thing, people remember if anyone's old enough listening to remember uh, the 1986 challenger explosion, you know, space shuttle blew up, seven astronauts died. And the running joke of course was NASA stood for need another seven astronauts yes oh, oh wow so <laughs> and that came out immediately and i'm going oh too soon maybe <laughs> uh so but what was interesting was the internet came out years later and these people aged naturally and people found them and and right. there's there's certain things in hollywood that have not changed and that is we're still not very good at hollywood even with deep fakes we can deep fake all day long but aging somebody is tough. We it's we can't get the lines right, and it's just they look like basically younger people with with age makeup on them. Mm -hmm. And there were several people that looked 
absolutely perfect it's like oh yeah 30 years later that's that's what this should look like mm. and so the uh, the one guy um uh, i can't remember his name offhand you'll you'll see it in the picture uh he uh but in fact hang on the video is on i think it's on my i've got a playlist and it's called odds and ends yeah it's the first one on odds and ends odds mike and smith yeah, his name's mike smith yeah yeah mike smith <laughs> right 1986 challenger footage and home footage in fact i'll paste it in for you real quick here so you have it it's in private chat hopefully you guys can see this awesome there it is yep. so right. mike smith and so we went to his house right and what was interesting there was what you know they caught him outside in the snow and they were talking to him and this isn't of course the uh the the the, the, the there's other shots that look better in the in the thing but when we went to his house what i thought was interesting about this was a lot of people that there's certain things in in crime and responses when you're being accused of something you go to and the first thing he would do normally anyone would do it's the alibi right so in 1986 it's the first thing it's like no in 1986 i was doing such and such he never went down that road mm. not once all he did was like yeah people have told me i've looked like him my whole life and it's like what <laughs> Yeah. Like, that's your opening line some and of them didn't even change their names the what yeah some, some of these people didn't even names. bother to change their names some right people. right yeah or so, they like changed the one letter and one and even mike smith <laughs> and the rest of them they all work for universities as professors and there you go things that and, seem like a smooth transitional process there which, mm. which can, it, it's expensive to train these guys remember all the astronauts are united states air force officers cost money to make these guys and because people say, well, why don't they just kill them? Right? It's like, a, well, first off, you wouldn't even put them in, in any sort of capsule, right? You, the last thing, you know, these guys are just sitting in an Air Force base waiting for, you know, the, the plane ride to, to get picked up. They should talk to Gus Grissom in that case. There you go. Gus Grissom, the guy that wouldn't. And that, by the way, that was a message sent. It's like, go along with the program. Yeah, <laughs> or so, else. Much, so much for the uh, lemon on the coat hanger. Yeah, you don't create. And yet he was supposed to be the first man on the moon. And yeah. he was... I believe that the original, I do think the movie Right Stuff from 1983 was very true in that the people that signed up for the program were absolute Boy Scouts and they wanted to be heroes, right? In the yeah. training program, it's like, yeah, let's do this. And then at the end, kind of like Capricorn 1, which I highly recommend everyone watch, uh, which is I think they pulled them off and it's like, okay, so here's the deal. Right, but they didn't tell Gus. You know, they they there was a message that Gus was a message sent to the other people. It's like, don't mess with us. Right, we we know what we're doing. Um, but Capricorn One, they they killed the astronauts because well, they couldn't have them around because they couldn't trust them. With everyone else, they just said, look, do what you're told, because we're watching you and you you you. They put them into witless relocation because that made more sense. Because remember, the internet didn't even exist in 1986; wouldn't exist for quite some time. So by the time they then they were rightly so. It's like, well, what you know, what, what's it going to matter? They're never going to find these people. We did, but again, it's it, I, I get it. I hmm. Personally, I, I you know, witness relocation was probably not the best move, but in the end, it didn't really hurt them. Hmm. Have you seen the BBC documentary, the old one? where they show the process by which in the emergency that a rocket failure happens. You know what I'm talking about, Mark? Mark where, where, yeah. Where they can get into a thing that is a slide that takes them, uh, I think it's like 40 foot underneath the rocket area, and they're into a uh, basically like a nuclear uh, shielded uh, capsule underneath the ground and they have seats where they you know uh, strap themselves in yep. and the bbc shows all this and says this is what they can do if there's an emergency and no matter what kind of explosion happened on the ground it would not affect the astronauts so it, it helps you when you see that right. as yep. someone who's coming into this who may not know what we're talking about so much you see that kind of picture it helps you understand well if they did, let's say they didn't have those eight astronauts, seven astronauts somewhere, maybe they yeah. put them in there. Even if you saw them go in, they've already admitted they have a slide to go down, go underneath, strap themselves in, and then they yeah. can escape to the next place. You know, it's it's very interesting how they always have ways around what Space they're revealing to us. Absolutely be faked. No mm -hmm. question whatsoever. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the high value production stuff like gravity or interstellar. Gravity, by the way, is a beautiful movie. 
you know the 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 space stuff they did there but we don't have to use the modern stuff you can go all the way back to um 2001 a space odyssey you do the sure. blu-ray version of that and you put yep. that up on a big screen i dare you to find the cropping mm -hmm. it is not there it is aged amazingly well and that movie is from 1968 and that's, space that's space can absolutely the what that's the whole ball of wax stanley kubrick and uh oh yeah yeah know, yeah uh, which is you hire consulting which, with nasa during the whole thing which is what yeah which is what you would do no different than the movie uh wag the dog Oh, which right. is, you know, hiring a Hollywood director to fake a war, you right. would do the same thing. You hire a Hollywood director, the best you can, and you make sure they're on board with you, and mm -hmm. you stay, you know, because, again, for a lot of Hollywood people, it's all about the money. People don't understand how much money is involved with, you know, how important it is to the Hollywood community. So when you walked up to a director with a blank check, and a literal blank check, and you say, yeah, so we need you to see, kind of explore what can be faked on film when it comes to space. It's like, mm. we'll give you five years to do it. And basically, you can ask for anything. Right. And, you know, Stanley Kubrick's like, can I use the test footage and weave it into a story and release it? It's like, yeah, sure. Just don't mention us. And it's like, yeah, right. Mm. And it did not, by the way, it did not win the Academy Award for Best Picture that year. I was wrong about that. <laughs> but was nominated and everybody freaking bought the soundtrack and it was it was amazingly gorgeous the thing about space we, we, anyone's listening they're like oh you know space is you you know you can't fake all this stuff i go the the one thing that got me and i reinforced it even more than long distance photography for me on the ground was the vacuum versus gravity question mm -hmm. that one just because you can't get around it which is why i came up mm -hmm. with the spacesuit challenge which was and the reason why the general public doesn't get it is because vacuum does not visibly look different than this right here. You know, people is like, what we're breathing in right now is a whole bunch of gas that you just can't see. If you take that out, it becomes a vacuum. And people don't get it. It's like, what's a vacuum? I go, it's nothing. Uh, it's, it's hard for some people to process. Mm -hmm. I go, but nothing can't exist next to not nothing. It will always equalize. And what I meant is, so like you blow up a balloon, you guys know this argument, you blow up a balloon with your hand, you let it, you know, you let it go with your fingers. It's always one million times out of a million times going to fly around the room because it's trying to equalize. Mm -hmm. I go, if there's a vacuum chamber above your head and you pull the pop, you know, the, the, the valve on it, the air will equalize instantly. It's violent. It is, it is mm -hmm. extremely quick. Uh, there's, you know, you've probably seen the videos I put on there. You know, the Germans love doing this. You know, the, the steel rail car, when you apply a vacuum field to the inside of it, just crushes within a fraction of a second. It's not mm -hmm. like the movies. Movies do things for plot reasons. And that's one of those things. In so many movies, people just be dead. I can't watch the end of Aliens now anymore. Where oh, Ripley no. is, is climbing up the ladder and there's open space behind yeah, her yeah, yeah. climbing up and there's there's wind blowing past her. And it's like mm -hmm. they'd all be dead. Dead, girl dead, and everyone's dead, and aliens mm -hmm. dead, everyone roll credits, it's over. Mm -hmm. Um, but people don't and I've asked scientists this, and and I will throw you know, any physics person, it's like, tell me what happens when our atmosphere ends and space begins. Tell me you gotta go happens. to space balls to see that. Space balls yes. shows you that, right? Yes. When the maid comes out and she sucks all the air off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? like, I go, how does that happen? I go, if the vacuum, if you have a vacuum chamber above you and it equalizes, if you go outside, how is our, our atmosphere mm -hmm. that still there? And the and they want to say gravity. And I go, and I go, you mean the gravity that couldn't keep the air in your living room from going upstairs? That gravity, that same exact gravity, and they don't know, they don't know what to do. And I've had even had so far the the physics students from Canada. She says, "Well, it doesn't pull on the particles that hard from space. It's like a thinning and thinning, and then it doesn't pull." I go, "Vacuum doesn't care about the edge of space. The vacuum's going after everything that's that's not pre mm. you know that's mm -hmm. that's pressurized." I go, I, "Here's a quick argument for you, real fast, which is, um, and you can throw this at your friends, which is you take a like an Amazon box, right?" And you fill mm -hmm. it with packing popcorn and you put a little bit of tape on the bottom of it, right? Pick it up. What happens? Nothing. But packing pop popcorn stays in there, right? Now I put it back on the, on the ground and put books, a whole bunch of books on top of the packing popcorn. And you pick that box up. What's going to happen? The books are just going to push that packing popcorn straight through it. The whole thing is going to collapse. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the point? The point is, is that if you're in the vacuum of space, it doesn't care about the packing popcorn on the outside. It's going after everything. It's going after every dense piece of atmosphere all the way down to the ground and probably the oceans to boot. Everything is going to be ripped off, off, off the world. 
and they can't they can't deal with it. They don't know what to do because the, their argument it, cir it circles back to it's it's cyclical thing, which is like, well, it has to be gravity because we're still alive. Get it? Yeah. It has to be gravity. And it's like, well, unless it's something else, like mm. I don't know, a pressurized system. It's like, well, it's not that. Like, oh, how do you know? So because it's not, and it's like, oh. Mm. Anyway, I was going to ask you guys, uh, both me, of you. Second, sorry. Um, hey. I was going to ask both you guys, um, both John and Mark, were you uh, kind of a, a NASA denier before you came to uh, the flat earth theory or, or did that happen because of you investigating the flat earth theory? Because in my case, I was, I was a NASA denier when I was a kid. Um, well, just, you know, like high school, I, I, I started to see that it was all kind of bullshit. Uh, but then afterwards, that was actually John that brought me to the flat earth. Um, so, so to me, I was already seemingly like half the way there. Like, you know, because I think that's the hardest thing for a lot of people. They're like, they just immediately point to NASA. So if they're not willing to let go of NASA, then it's just not going to work. I wasn't a fanboy, but at the same time, I believe what people, I believe what the authority tells us. You know, I didn't, again, I grew up on a very rural island up near Canada in the corner of the United States. I didn't believe that people lied at any high levels at all. And so, and then I started noticing, people don't understand that, after the last moon mission in 1972, there was a group of people, nerdy conspiracy guys, that were going after the moon missions immediately because they were finding inconsistencies, but there was no internet. Mm -hmm. So the only thing they could do is go to like UFO conferences and set up a table, you know, and say, look, you know, this, this rock's out of place and this doesn't make sense. And this is, mm -hmm. and they were absolutely right, but mm -hmm. their audience was, was very, very small and tailored to, you know, the mainstream wasn't going to touch it with a 10 foot pole. Um, but no, I believed in, I believed in space. Oh, hell dude. I went all the way back to, um, Nibiru. I was Nibiru guy wow. <laughs> for a while. I, I bought into that hook line and sinker. I'm wow. thinking, you know, oh, Nibiru is going to happen. Cause I, you know, binary, you know, the whole binary system thing is like, oh yeah, absolutely feasible. Right. And then 2012 happened. Nothing. 2013, 2014 is like, so my, my joke was, well, if it ever does happen, I go, it'll be completely artificial. If, if somebody says Nibiru's in the sky now, I'd be like, what the hell took you so long? Because everyone everyone was wrong there. It's, it doesn't even make sense now. So it's the flat earth argument that destroyed your faith in NASA. Yes, not... because, but, but that's the same way with a lot of people, because you have to use, when you know this, nobody loves flat earth right away. Nobody. Oh, I've awful. never it's seen awful. a single, single it's person. Awful. But- Everyone has to use if you're trying to tear down flat earth, you have NASA is your biggest weapon. It's it's right. your it's your easiest to access. It has the most content. It's this stack of cardboard, you know, boxes that are, you know, it's very, very high. But then you start going through these boxes and you realize there's nothing in them. And you know, over and over and over. And finally, you know, hundred boxes later, you realize you're just looking at packing popcorns. And you're going, What the hell? I go, yeah. you, you you NASA was supposed to be all these things. And there was a guy that made videos a while ago. I haven't looked up in a while. He was uh, Max Malone. And he was really good at noticing what was missing. He was the guy that first came up with he's the, the thing. It's like, why don't astronauts ever spin around with the camera? Okay? And mm -hmm. it's like, why? how is that? Because that should happen somewhere. You know, somebody, you know, especially on the moon. It's like, look, I'm on the moon. Just start spinning around in circles. No, no one ever did it. And, mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, the, I get the it. Fourth, because there's the fourth wall. The, the uh, fourth wall. There's yeah. limitations to what mm -hmm. you can do in a Hollywood production. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and now you could take that to another level, like when you were doing like the ISS interior footage. But then you're mm -hmm. limited to whatever you're faking it in. Because they're initially faking it before CGI. They were faking it in planes. So it could only be as wide as a plane. And it had this weird background noise that didn't make any sense. Yeah, the vomit and, comet there. Yeah, the vomit comet. And then they started blending CGI graphics with the vomit comet. So anyway, so no. So long answer short, uh, no, I had complete faith in NASA. Absolutely. Wow. I, I knew nothing about anything. And and uh, completely every, tearing down, it, Flat Earth broke NASA. But it doesn't break. It breaks it differently for different people. 
I've had people, even on, on interviews, where they say, okay, the moon missions, they're a piece of crap. But you can't tell them the ISS is fake. <laughs> <laughs> like it's not I mean, fake. it's in a swimming pool i go i go you realize people don't understand the rules of crime which is it's like look if you're gonna fake one thing you mm -hmm. gotta fake everything because it's the same punishment if you get caught so right. why would anything be real whatsoever uh mm -hmm. you know it shoot if you shoot two people you might as well shoot them all mm -hmm. because it, it's mm -hmm. it's going to be the same and so there's some people then they they're holding on to it uh hell the, one of the the guys um uh anti-moon guys and probably one of the best in my opinion uh, bart sabrell who did uh, funny thing happened on the way to the moon right? yeah. Yeah, he hates great. us hates <laughs> flatter absolutely really? hates right. because yeah because he's afraid of the heat because he, he gets so much shit as it is so he just he i don't yeah, think he wants he, to buy he, into it yeah he he's like one it takes away from my work and mm -hmm. two uh it makes my work you know makes the whole concept look ridiculous there's a lot a lot of people others like flat earth makes all conspiracy people look nuts it's like no nah, mm -hmm. conspiracy right. people look nuts to begin with we took it to <clears throat> you know to the next level which is <laughs> yeah i don't want to quote too many things from david weiss which is everything is fake i don't i that, but that's one of those things i don't necessarily believe in but i don't blame him there's a term out there called auto hoaxing which is Everything mm -hmm. media is a lie unless proved otherwise. You know, instead of, you know, innocent until proven guilty, it's like, no, it's all a lie until it's so to where people don't believe in anything, which mm -hmm. I think is a little, eh, it's fine. I mean, it's, I suppose it's the safe way to go. Uh, but I get into little tiffs with people now because it's like, oh, I don't believe in this, this, and this. It's like, come on. You got to believe in something. I, yeah, I think that can be a little dangerous if you start can to be. question everything. Can be, but but at the same time, I, I get it. You know, the the reason why people have a hard time, everyone everyone's got their own comfort zone, their own wheelhouse. Sure. And I and I the argument I throw at people, especially journalists, when they say, "Oh, you know, conspiracies," you know, that it can't all be conspiracies. I go, "Really?" I go, "So nobody lies in politics, business, sports, right. entertainment, uh, and journalism and science." I go, "I could spend a day on any one of those categories," mm. and they go, "Well, yeah, there is." I go, "Really? Where?" And then, or the argument you, some of you may have heard, which is, uh, I came up with this a while back, which was, I go, there's no fake news. There's no fake news, right? So everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. And it can't resolve yeah. both of them because both of them absolutely accuse each other of, of making fake news. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it comes down to, you know, political values and again, what you're comfortable with. There's some people that that the the part that got me the the writer of that book, she believes in media sanctioned conspiracies, right? It's <laughs> so like Watergate was media sanctioned, wow, and you know Enron was media sanctioned. But then it's not even a conspiracy anymore. It's either a scandal, <laughs> unless right. somebody dies, and then it's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. But anything I outside of that, unless it's actually proven by the media, then it's a conspiracy. It's like can I, I always add? point Accepted people to the media. The what? Sorry, I said accepted. Maybe not proven. Yeah, it, maybe accepted by the media. Yeah, the the media is propagated. You know, and and people again, they and I don't. Again, I don't blame them. Which is the media comes off. You know, they present themselves as an objective news source. And I go, yeah, except that they're bought by a parent company that's bought by a parent company that has an agenda. They have an objective. I go, and these are old tricks going back to old tricks are the best tricks. Um, hell, the the movie even goes back further than that but the first movie that touched on this was citizen kane which was rich people learned a long time ago it's like if somebody's writing bad things about you just buy them out mm -hmm. and not just the reporter buy out the whole freaking newspaper and then the radio station and then the television station you just buy them out to protect you know your own interests that's what everybody does hmm. so. i like orson wells um f is for fake i don't know if you've ever seen that film but no. it's it's one of his later films it's phenomenal and it's all about because he really i think he did he wasn't a flat earther but i think he could have been man because he's just he was logical and that film he shows so many cool things of how it's always right in front of us that things are a lie we just don't even realize it because it may not even be sinister from the point of view that we're being you know propagated but it still is a lie it's so much fake there's I an like old the movie they live that's one of my favorites oh, yeah. they live is a, is a perfect example of it there's yeah. an old <laughs> there's an old line by mark twain which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story 
And by that, and I learned this over the last six, seven years, which is producers, not, there was this great line by um, Carrie Fisher, the, the late Carrie Fisher, when she was being asked about reality television, right? reality television. And she's going, you know, is, you know, are you worried that reality television is going to really dilute, you know, the, the, all the other industries, especially made motion pictures. And she laughs, just laughs. She goes, she goes, what are you talking about? She goes, if it's on TV, it's not real. Yeah. And what she meant by that was producers will absolutely, the power of editing and the power of them putting things forward, you know, even innocuous things like when I did a, um, a National <laughs> Geographic thing down in Los Angeles, right? Mm -hmm. And I was meeting the on-air talent. I met I met the the interviewer for the first time six times. You know what I mean? Meaning it's like, hey, it's Mark Sargent. Hey, shake hands. Blah, blah. Okay, let's do it from this angle. Hey, it's Mark Sargent. Hey, right. you know, and, wow. and multiply that by everything that we were doing. Uh, right. You know, even there was this one, sorry, I, I go off on different tangents. Um, we were asked to be on that silly show, The Amazing Race, mm. right? The Flyers okay. community was allowed. They were going to do an all internet version. And all YouTube version, right? That's all all the all YouTubers on there, and it completely fell through because the, most of the YouTubers were making so much money off of YouTube. A lot of people don't know that when they put you in the Amazing Race, they have a media blackout. You are with them for at least a month, and you have no access to anything: no phones, no emails, no internet, no nothing. And you know, people, big internet people are like, oh, "I can't do that," but. Their point was they they said, hey, watch, and I never watched that show before in my life. And they said, watch season blah, blah, blah. And I watched it and I could see the editing. You know, I, I'm I'm big on story. It's like I could see the plot holes and I could see where they were they were manufacturing. There was no race. There's no amazing race involved, right? It's mm -hmm. like they're not even out of breath when they're mm -hmm. talking to these people. They have, yes, they you might run from here to there. But then they let you sit and wait for a while. And, and then it's like, all right, well, we're going to have you say these lines or comment on this. Sure. But I even went back just just to check. I went back <laughs> to season one, episode one, and I was catching it even then. And so, and I kind of pissed them off when I did this. I wrote them back and I said I gave them the whole plot line. I go, I go, okay. So I get the theater aspect of this. I go, I go. Here's what you do. First, you know, first place wins a million dollars. Second place gets fifty thousand. Third place just sits on the podium and does nothing, right? Mm. And I go, make Flat Earthers the villain and make them get third place. I go, everyone will root against them. But I go, the point is because if you get knocked off, you, you the whole point is you want to make it to the last episode, right? Mm. Because otherwise, you know, you get knocked off in the first two episodes, you're never seen again. Mm. And I go, make Flat Earth, make it all the way to the end. They don't have to win the million bucks. They have to win. The I go, but make them like they're in the running because people are like, no, Flat Earth shouldn't win. They're stupid. You know, people hate Flat Earth. And I go, but make them sit at the podium and be like, oh, shucks, we almost had them. I go, and then I said, I, I where I got myself into trouble was I said, yeah, yeah, I know that the Amazing Race is absolutely authentic and real. I go, as much as about, you know, the WWE is. Yeah. And that was it. That's when they said, "Okay, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go." We're gonna go. We're, no, it's still doing flat earthers. We're not gonna have you on the yeah, show. Yeah, we can't anymore. steer these guys. No, they were, but but I got it. I mean, they and that's when they picked uh, Matt Long and Nate Thompson, and per my recommendations. And they, a lot of people don't know, is the winner. Everybody's chosen. The the whole path is chosen before the show even starts filming. Oh, is, really? you know, they do screen tests and it's like okay these guys are going to win these guys you know this will be the rivalry these will be the pain in the ass and the so. same thing is true with um, american idol too i actually i knew somebody that was was on there yeah it's it's mind blowing nothing there is they nothing you, there is no such thing as as yeah. reality television nothing yeah um, nothing they tell you like, it can't be it has to be written it yeah. has to be written um what, yeah. here's, here's a quick little one for you um and i didn't watch the show much but how many children did Ozzy Osbourne have? You remember he had the show, The Osbournes, right? Right. Oh, it was two. You know, the nerdy the guy with the glasses yeah. and the girl that kept changing her hair color. No, there was an older daughter. Yeah. There was three. But she said, I don't want to be part of this BS show. And <laughs> she she was living in the house the entire time. And they had to shoot <laughs> around her. It's amazing. And apparently uh, she would go to places and she would introduce herself and they'd be like, no, you're not. You weren't on the TV show, right? Mm. And it's like, no, I am. I decide not to be on the TV show. And it just, it just completely blows their mind because it's like the reality that was shown. It's like, no, this is the Osborne family. It's like, nope. 
Nope. Nothing is real. Nothing. She's the badass Osborne, I guess, huh? Yeah. Yeah. She was the she's the smart one. Well, uh, I have a quick question for you. What's the um what's the mindset <clears throat> when the uh, the majority of the world honestly doesn't either A believe you or uh in some cases uh, berate you maybe or like what's 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 the mindset there for you? Oh, somebody comes at me. Does it propel you to even investigate and, and preach about it even further? Um, it doesn't really change much. There was a guy, a uh, reporter for uh, New Zealand Today, and he br- he's one of those guys, one of those instigators. Well, let me tell you first. The guy, that, that the interviewer that intimidated me the most was Piers Morgan because really? I had seen him tear people to shreds, right? Mm-hmm. And politicians and, and, and actors and all of a sudden I'm going – Going, I don't want to do this show. And then I learned that that one of our astronauts is going to be sitting right next to him. And at the last minute, I'm going, I really don't want to do this show. But I learned right then the, the point, and producers kind of coax you through it, is like you don't want to be cut off. I got a whole bunch of crap for that interview, which I couldn't even put on my channel because of copyright issues. I got a, a, I couldn't be um, – the, the goal is you don't want to get cut off by the producers. You don't want to, because people say, why didn't you attack Terry? You had an astronaut right in front of you. Why didn't you attack him? I go, here's why. I go, look, Terry, you son of a bitch, rat bastard, lied, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, oh, hey, we lost Mark. We'll try to get him right. back after the commercial. And you never get come back, right? right. The whole point is you, you want to go the distance, right? Mm-hmm. You want to go the full 10 minutes or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. But there was this guy in New Zealand who sat me down in the hot deliberately he was in the shade i was in the hot sun for 40 minutes right he's just hitting me hitting me and all sorts of stuff he'd throw in little barbs and towards the end he was starting to he was um using all sorts of profanity on me right mm-hmm. and he just stops he goes stop for a second he goes, he goes look i've been trying to get a rise out of you for a while now yeah. and you're not going for it he goes yeah. he goes what's the deal mm-hmm. he goes why aren't you uh, why aren't you doing you know why aren't you you know, losing your shit and I said, because it'd be hypocritical for me to do that. I go, I go, I go, everyone that goes into flat earth the first time, I go, look, five years ago, I was you. Mm-hmm. So how could I, how could I yell at you? Well, I was like, why are you so and so? He's like, you know, mm-hmm. how dare you, sir? You know, dueling pistols. We, we got to mm-hmm. do that. And, but that happens more often than you think. And where people, they, the, the, the people that talk, most of the time, you can't take it personally. A lot of the times when they try to get a rise out of you, they're doing that just for the sound bite. Right. That's all they care about. There was um, you know, when you're when you're mic'd up, like a full blown, you you have a mic pack, and I think I I don't know how many mic pack interviews I've done, but I've done a bunch. They'll leave that mic pack on you because mm-hmm. they're hoping that you'll say something off context, that you'll go off road mm-hmm. and you'll mm-hmm. get comfortable. And I'll tell you an Eric DeBay story in a second because that, that reminds me of an Eric DeBay story. But they're waiting for you. It's like, yeah, you know, Flat Earth is great. And here's this and here's that. And I'm calm. And, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, cut. And then, you know, may, maybe off camera. It's never off camera. Always mm-hmm. treat absolutely everything like it's recorded. Don't mm-hmm. ever let your guard down. They'd be like, you know, might ask me a question. I don't vote. But they'd be like, you know, what do you think of Donald Trump? And if all of a sudden I said, Donald Trump is a living demigod, you know? <laughs> That's the quote they would use. That that's mm-hmm. that's the sound bite that they that they want. Um, Eric Dubé fell into that trap, where he was doing an interview with Eddie Bravo, and you know years ago before the first conference, the the, mm-hmm. the first big conference in in the Carolinas, and I told people I go here's what's going to happen. I predicted this. I said I go if this thing goes over ninety minutes, Eric's going to let his guard down. He's going to get too comfortable. It's going to start popping off. And at the 100 minute mark, Eric just starts and it's like, it's, oh, that conference is a freaking shill fest. And, and all this other, he's just, just, you know, this person, you know, he's just laying into people. Mm. And, uh, I, you know, because he figured, well, you know, he was comfortable. And now, yeah. he, you know, he could say this. So, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make me do anything more or less i just I, I i'm completely empathetic when it comes to that people uh people I, because i know how i felt you know i was you know just banging my head on the keyboard going nope can't be real can't be real can't be real I, there was no one to yell at because there were so few, very few people i mean matt boylan i wasn't going to yell at him eric debay i didn't even really know who he was uh and there was just so very few people that i couldn't 
point my my the good thing about flat earth is most of the time the people that come against us aren't going after the messenger thank god because right. otherwise we'd have dead people <laughs> if people because eventually they realize like well i'm angry at flat earth i'm not angry at him so hmm. uh, you know we we luck out there so when you were in that in the filming of behind the curve which yeah. unfortunately i haven't seen that but oh you haven't um, seen it yet no, no I, 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 for well because like I, I was you know you turned jaron on to making videos and yeah i i was on jaron's show a few times before the movie was out and i told him and others that i felt it would be portrayed in a negative fashion and the you know basically summing us up as crazy people right right which even the term flat earth like i almost question like like i can't help but question like why did you choose the term flat earth clues and mm -hmm. not something else like is it just because the stigma does as horrible as it is it does shine a light on whoa this is a whole nother world folks or no because in, in 2015 i didn't know there was another term <laughs> there you know yeah, remember 2015 there was so little there were so few resources to remember i in fact i might even still have it i still have my flatter society card I yeah you joined the flatter <laughs> society to try yeah. to get more information i'd imagine yep i did i right? did here it is yeah. in fact it was written to me in summer of 2014 right about there <laughs> oh nice <laughs> but uh you know from the guy in hong kong that uh, that was doing them it cost me like 18 dollars so mm. to, to get that and by the way thank you for bringing up jaron jaron that yes i prompted him to, to do videos and i love his quote which was because he he was starting to do videos in 2015 too and his line was well i saw what mark Sargent was doing and if that guy could make videos i certainly could do it. <laughs> he has a way went, of summing things up like that doesn't he and he went down to the set to the to the thrift shop and bought like an old old version of video editing software for like six dollars and he mm. goes he goes i can absolutely make videos better than him mm. it's like, oh god thanks man mm. really, really well great. i think he but, just meant your style of putting oh, I, out no, I putting out I, well, their no, information he, his, point, his point was very true though it's like look mm. i was using um windows live movie maker you know from from 2012 you know mm. a really basic video editing program mm. because it was free and it's mm -hmm. like, well, I might as well see if I can fudge my way through that. But mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's not. <laughs> what's the, um, what's, what's the, the next step? step? I, I, see, I suppose I would ask like, uh, um, it is improving. That's I mean, it. so, well, it's got, it's tough because the, the last two years have, um, stunted everybody so badly, you know, right. we, we, I was doing, I did seven conferences in seven countries in 2019 and in 2020 i did one hmm. and it was in, it was in america um as far as proving things i don't know if there's anything new that we can do short of the uh, you know the two i have refined my my proofs what will we do to convince me i mean we pretty much convinced it to ourselves and we've got we've got so much content out there at this point i mean i've got i've got 14 i'm looking at my video channel i've got 1400 videos on my channel and just the playlist that my the one that i love so much flat earth test experiments and observations has 42 in it and those are just the best ones i chose mm. um i just finished going through those last week they're great thank you I, a lot of them aren't me you know i i'm yeah. not shy about mirroring mirroring videos from other people because again the the clues at no point did i say go to the beach that's what i loved by the way is that inspiration comes from from anywhere and it's systemic in that, in, you know, people come up with, and we see this in the entertainment industry all the time, which is people come up with an idea and it's like, yeah, yeah, I like what he's doing, but I'm going to tweak it this way. And then that's what resonates, whatever that person does. Mm -hmm. um, so like, like when people were telling me, the, people don't forget the, the, I was a big fan of the Orlando Ferguson map uh, mm -hmm. that looked like a roulette table oh, yeah. uh, from the mm -hmm. 1830s when this mm -hmm. thing first started out. And people called me almost immediately and said, yeah, yeah, you got to ditch that map. And I go, okay, why? And they go, okay, well, at first, it looks like a roulette table, and all the numbers of a roulette table add up to 666. And I go, mm. is that true? It actually is true. Just wow. mind-blowing. It's like, okay. Um, but the second thing was they people said it's absolutely flat. And I, I literally was on the phone. I said, how do you know? And, and they're going, because we went to the beach with long-distance cameras. And I go, and? 
And they go, well, water lays perfectly level. I didn't come up with any of that crap. People were just like mm -hmm. go running to the beach with these cameras, mm -hmm. shooting long distance. It's like, yeah, there's no curve. And it's like, what? Mm -hmm. Really? And I go, none at all? And I mean, even I was surprised that, uh, that, that they were doing it. Again, the people and, and all these people were doing the same thing without talking to each other. It was, right. instinct, it was instinctual, mm -hmm. which was, oh, I'm going to shoot this lighthouse. Oh, I'm going to shoot these ships. Oh, I'm going to shoot these, these oil rigs. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. It was great. Well, it's like, well, said, everyone, it's, it's like you said, the matrix. It's like the propaganda machine is so much that it eats up people's common sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, the, once the rumor got out, once people start, the buzz started coming out where it's like, oh, yeah, there's an easy way for you to prove this. And then people start coming up with other things. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah, the, clues, the clues helped, of course. But people, it started people thinking on, and again, I'm not going to take credit for a lot of stuff because all I did was create the really easy version. Eric DeBay, like I have criticized him in the past for various things, mm -hmm. but his stuff was too difficult for the first, for people to get into it in the first five minutes. Right. Because some people would be like, yeah, I, I, I don't, but my stuff was so basic that you couldn't if you couldn't understand it well there's nothing i can do for you well he's a matter of one, fact and you're questioning you know yes different. oh i i kind of stole sorry I johnny didn't, so, I didn't, uh, sorry wait real quick i didn't steal that this deliberately but it kind of worked out this way because i was a fan back in the day of the whole ancient aliens which is why we could still do a flatter television show the the ancient aliens formula which was if you ever watched that show they never they never nail anything down. It's very ethereal. It's like, well, this could be interesting. And oh, hey, take a look at this. And at the very right. end, they, they always end it with a question. It's like, do all these things, you know, mean, you know, mean that there's, you know, that, that uh, there's aliens amongst us. Mm. And then, then they just trail off and that's it. Mm -hmm. It's a cliffhanger question. Mm -hmm. And, and you're like, oh, maybe, but they don't, <laughs> they don't drive it home to where you're defensive against it, mm -hmm. which is why it ran for <sighs> 12 seasons or something like that? It's ridiculous. Yeah, something crazy, yeah. I just wanted to mention um, one of my favorite uh, videos that you had posted for proofs and uh, like that. Mm -hmm. um, it was just like what I was thinking about that uh, was airplane travel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of those on there was you, you take a torpedo level. Like I'm a carpenter, so I make my living with level, square, plumb. So I always – that always puzzled me. So one of those videos was like, they take the torpedo level, they set it level when the planes reached altitude, and they prove that the plane is never nosing down right. to accommodate for the, the Earth's curvature. That one, to me, is like, it's so simple, but it's, it's so, uh, it just cuts right through a lot of the bullshit because you would have to nose a plane down, you know, every mm -hmm. certain amount of miles you know to, to keep from flying off in outer space right that, that was so it's so simple but it really uh was profound with me maybe i'm just a simple person but no 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 um, really, d, uh, d marble um let me see if i can find this real quick hmm. f l i g h t lights track yeah that is the great um I that is a great that little example, and, and uh, a lot of the uh, the people that would say that don't believe in that, they say, oh, well, the Earth is so large that, right. uh, the, you know, the sphere is, you know, it, it, it spans out so long, but then you can right. easily bring the, the math yeah. back in it as well. And right. The, the curvature so calculator is the curvature calculator. Right. There you know, this, like when you plug in the numbers. Like There's this wonderful video I will find for you uh, today. Or it's, the should one where he gets on the plane, Mark? Well, no, no, D, no, D Marble's thing was great, but there was a more interesting one where there was a guy that made a video. No, in fact, he just sent it to me and I just made it into a video, which was the, the flight track one of the flight tracker softwares. Normally it's top down, normally mm -hmm. it's top down. And mm -hmm. there was a version where it flipped sideways so you could watch it horizontally. And what they did was they extrapolated it to where, again, this is straight out of their raw data. And the planes were literally going straight up, almost, you know, relatively, and then flying absolutely perfectly level to their destination and going down. And what was interesting about that video was, is that the United States, and they were showing, you know, the entire United States. What was interesting was the United States was perfectly flat on this mm -hmm. map. I'm mm -hmm. going, 
and and the planes were running perfectly flat on this map it's like why would they be running perfectly flat i go there's a massive curvature over the united states in fact the raw data would be curved data mm -hmm. so why are you why is the the plane tracking software running it on an absolutely flat map and that's because mm -hmm. when they do their calc you know when they're building the model it builds out as flat right mm -hmm. And it's, it's you know, it. you, you're literally watching these planes. Again, I have done many business travel and the D marble thing, that was not a big surprise to me at all because you never, you are hypersensitive when you're on a plane of any sort of motion. You are, especially, you know, if you've got a drink in your hand, you're trying to do stuff, you know, when the plane is at, at cruising altitude and you are, you know, there's no turbulence or anything. It is absolutely solid. Nothing is moving at all. I mean, it is perfect. And you're absolutely right. Is you will either be nosing down or nosing up, you know, ever so gradually at some point and never, ever does. Mm -hmm. And yeah, people, people got onto that one. That was great. I was glad that D Marble put himself out there again, risked it all. And he caught a lot of crap. Oh my God. The negative, yeah. the thumbs down on that one was had to have been at least 80% on that video. I think it's interesting that they turned the, um, the number of thumbs down off on YouTube. Mostly for political reasons. Yeah, uh, believe it because of the not. White House. They were The White House was getting crushed. Their approval <laughs> rating was tanking. Anything the White House was putting out was just getting annihilated. <laughs> and yeah. so they decided... Like 200 we'll... thumbs up, like 10,000 thumbs down. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was so bad that they... Yeah. But they had a good excuse. It's like, yeah, we're just going to cut down on the whole troll thing and, you know, get people's self-esteem. And the whole, and it was weird because there was a, there was a rating system out there before it shut down, which was the worst rated YouTube videos in history. And, you know, people, wow. you know, like the song, like Friday and Justin Bieber had a thing on there and Jake Paul and crap like that. Mm -hmm. And that's all meaningless now because there's people, anyone that's getting to YouTube for the first time, they don't even know that thumbs down was a thing. Mm. Uh, it's like, and the ratio, the ratio is gone. And, and again, what that helped out us because that proved my point that few years few years earlier in 2018 was when they got rid of search results the number mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. beforehand you could type in any topic that's how i knew we were doing that. i've got a playlist that covered the numbers i even got screenshots and there was a playlist um uh when you again when you typed in flat earth in 2015 it came out with relevant search results of 50,000 that doesn't mean videos that just means everything that mentions flat earth in the video system and that just kept going up and up and up and up and up until mm -hmm. finally they realized that it was they, they couldn't do anything to stunt the numbers and so they just removed in you know kind of like thumbs down they just took the line out entirely so it doesn't matter what you type into youtube you yeah you'll get search you'll get the items but it'll never say what the number was it'll never say search results equals and that's mm -hmm. internet 101 hmm. that's that's been around since the internet was started uh mark uh in your investigative research uh, over yep. the past years here where do you find that most of your proofs and facts come from oh, more astronomy or more tangible things that are on earth right now what's a good question no one's ever asked me that um i would say both uh it really because most of the stuff comes from other people you know we we compare observations and compare observations and it all it takes is one usually it's a it's a consensus people will float an idea out there someone will say you know kind of like the um i'll give you a great one the uh the moon temperature test oh yeah love that people threw that thing out there in 2016 and even i i remember i was one of the first people to hear it from some caller and i just mm. laughed at him it's like what are, you, what are you smoking you know <laughs> John, jonathan one of my what he was my co-host at the time he's wow he goes that's out there mm. and but then, we, but people heard it and people started, and what, what was interesting was it was easy to test. That's the, the really kind of like it, an easy message. If it's easy to test, you will find out if it resonates in two seconds. Hmm. So all of a sudden people were out there, you know, running around with temperature guns, you know, buying $20 temperature guns and as testing it to where some guy, um, I think last year or two years ago, did a predator vision version of it. Where he actually put on, you know, the whole the 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 camera with the predator vision, and it worked. It was absolutely flawless. In fact, it was way more comprehensive than what we were doing. Excuse me, Mark. I just wanted just for the audience, um, yeah. those people that are, are unaware of that experiment, we're discussing how the light of the moon is actually colder, right? Than the shade, right, right, right. 
So there was somebody that said, initially proposed that the, the moon generates a cold light. And we didn't understand it. We were like, what do you mean? It's colder at night? Duh. We, we know that. And it's like, no, no, man. The moon is generating a cold, you know, cold laser light. And it's like, nah, it can't be. And so what, what we found out through trial and error, and there's some wonderful things posted on, on my channel out there about it. We tested it every way you could think of. In fact, Rob Skiba was one of the first guys to test it. May um, he rest in peace. May he rest in peace. Uh, he... Um, the, which is, if it's 90 degrees in the sunlight, it's 80 degrees in the shade. We all know that. But if it's 50 degrees in the moonlight, it's 60 degrees in the moon shade. It's actually warmer in the shade, up to like 13 degrees Fahrenheit. And even weirder was when I suggested, I go, what happens if you magnify moonlight? I go, because if you magnify sunlight, it gets, um, it gets, it gets hotter. You can burn things. Concentrated, it, yeah. Yeah, but if you magnify moonlight, does it get colder? And it does. It absolutely gets colder. And so does that prove a flat Earth? No, but it completely blows away the relationship between the sun and the moon because everyone knows, well, the moon's lit up because it's reflecting the sun. Mm -hmm. Do you mean magnify in a practical sense? Like you hold a magnifying glass under moonlight? Yeah, you moonlight. hold a magnifying glass up to moonlight, it's, which is already cold, and then you take that point of light and you throw it on a sensor. It will actually be colder. That's um, preferably on the full moon. You yeah, know? preferably we on have the full a lot moon of light where it's mm -hmm. high in the sky type of stuff. You know, no different than the sun. You know, the sun's not very warm in the winter. Do you but, have to do this experiment um, with the ground temperature being above a certain uh, point? No, you don't even have to use. You don't even have to do the ground. Um, we've done it with copper strips and water which works really, really well, uh, where you just do a copper strip in, in, in a glass of water and that Jeff Grupp did a great thing on it where, you know, one was in the moonlight, one was in the moonshade, and then he had a, a jeweler's arm holding a magnifying glass <laughs> for the third one. And it, he, he was absolutely true. Now, again, does not prove a flat earth, but mm -hmm. it, what it suggests is that the moon is self-illuminated. And if the moon is self-illuminated, whoa, then we got a problem because that mm -hmm. means the sun is not what you think it is, neither is the moon. Right, uh, right. Because again, the moon cannot generate, at the very least, if the moon is reflecting the sun's light, yeah, it might go neutral in terms of temperature, but it should never go negative. And it should definitely yeah. not go negative double digits. Well, like, the like Bible that. says that uh, the moon generates her own light. Yeah. Or, Why would it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the moon is an inspirational piece that, that you know, inspires. It's, it's a nightlight. That's all it is. I mean, the sun, the sun is an incandescent bulb that generates heat it, along with other things. The moon is a, um, and again, the, the, I did not know any of this crap. People were calling me up going, you know, we can do this in labs right now. I go, what? I go, we can change the frequency of a laser. Everyone thinks, oh, laser beams, you know, burn holes and things. Like you can change the frequency of a laser and it can generate a cold light. Uh, in fact, it's used in, um, you can look it up, cold light health things for people to do facial stuff. Mm. You can, it's, I don't know if it works. It's probably snake oil, mm. you know, in terms of what it can do, but it generates actually a cooling light. There are lasers that, that generate cold light. Mm. And again, I use that as one of my, uh, my five sciencey questions that I throw people because scientists do not know what to do with it. Most of them have never heard it before in their life. And why would they? And when they hear it, they're, they're like, What? <laughs> you know they you know it's true i go yeah you don't even i go i go, I go test it with a i got a laser thing i think sitting right i got one of these i think i do yeah one of these right here point and click laser thermometer 20 bucks Bingo. and you're thinking why do these things even exist i didn't even know why these things even were even existed they were to test um usually engine blocks mm. they're for mechanics so you you test like the temperature of an engine or when they're doing um road asphalt stuff you can point it at asphalt and you can, you can test if the asphalt is enough to smooth it over and stuff. So, wow. Or COVID-19 temperatures. <laughs> <laughs> so you, can, you can use this to, to actually check the temperature of your skin. And, That's right. You, know, skin you just saying that got us kicked off of whatever platform we're on. <laughs> oh, no, no. You're, you're fun. You know, I, lear I learned a lot about that. You can get away with some stuff. Um, the thing you cannot, you're not allowed to do anymore is you cannot... I know because I've gotten the messages. You cannot contradict the CDC or the WHO. Period. What's if the they WHO? have a statement, you cannot contradict it. Yet they or contradict themselves. Organization. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, well, heck, I mean, I just started putting out – when I do Strange World episodes now, uh, a podcast I do every every Tuesday, I can't 
I, I'm now I'm careful enough. Well, because you know it's over. Because it's over, because you know the whole war thing that I love that by the way. Yeah. That they just transitioned to those like mandates have now been repealed, and here's the war. It's like what <laughs> it's always oh. like that. Remember like the wildfires in Australia? And that was mm -hmm. like, you know, it was like the, this amazing story and everyone's you know obsessed with it, and then yeah. the very next thing happened, and then that was oh, it. Oh yeah. The yeah. the media is there they have they don't care about segues anymore. They just mm -hmm. don't. They mm -hmm. they are told to what the producers just transition over, and the, that's what the stories they run. And it's like, oh, it drives me nuts. So it's obvious that your YouTube channel is still up and running, and you said it yourself that you know you're surprised that you're not shut down. Yeah. Now, where do you think the threshold is that what what you can get away with without being either shadow banned or? Well, I, I've been shadow banned for a while. Yeah. In fact, I was, I was, they, they didn't, I didn't get off completely. They demonetized my channel entirely. There's no, there's really? no way I can get that back. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, and it was mostly because I started off, I back in, you know, when 2020, I was bitter anyway, because I was on my way to, um, England to do a pancake day commercial for McDonald's. <laughs> because it's round and it's flat and they said oh flat or tie and it'll be brilliant i'm going yeah let's do that and um then that's like oh yeah by the way the border's closed and it's like what so immediately after that happened i just started going off on a tear against mm. this whole you know that whole thing for two years straight and there's again you can get away with some stuff but but again the 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 things they youtube the messages are very simple and I could read you the, the text. I've got it sitting somewhere where it's like, you just can't contradict the medical field. You cannot do it deliberately. Mm -hmm. um, the false flags. You can't talk about, can't talk about the, the, the medical stuff. And then what was the other thing? Um, oh, the election yeah. <laughs> back when that was a thing you, yeah. you could get, you could get mm -hmm. booted for, you know, saying something that the election was fishy. So you can't talk about operation Northwoods or the Gulf of Tonkin. <laughs> oh you can talk about that sure yeah. but but like like for example because it's old it's old history yeah it's not like present Gold day Gold, right but if you but if i wanted to talk about oh i don't know mm. something involving a school right or mm. something like that you you, you can't you can't do that's that. what got jones nailed up yeah the school yeah. situation yeah at least I'm, that's how it's like, being portrayed so yeah, now yeah. now my big focus is the uh is the war and stuff and you know i heard I'm, your last strange days podcast i listened to it just in preparation i was like let me hear what he had to say this and it you had uh what was it brian wilson or somebody that oh yeah guy. brian B brian burton master burton. united states army mm -hmm. master gunner he and i have been mm -hmm. comparing notes uh and he he just retired fairly recently and uh and he said that yeah well, he goes he goes this he goes we're this is going to get really weird soon, mostly because, well, you, you heard the show, the whole Petro Ruble thing. So, like, my next mm -hmm. show on Tuesday is going to be called The the Last Money Wars hmm. because now it's come down. People don't get yeah, but I'll tell you guys really Do quick. you think we're in that spiral, that we are coming to the point where the dollar is not the oil? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 we're, yeah. We're, we're, we're there. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're there. It's it's mm -hmm. it, they've, they've finally called our bluff. It was going to happen sooner or later. They've been predicting is, it forever, so. Yeah, the, the, I'm sorry. I got Let me give this to you guys really fast because I think your listeners would want to know this, which is there's a hidden thing with America, which is the reason why America has done so well. The reason why we're talking right now and our standard of living has gotten so high is because we, ran, we figured out how to run a protection racket on oil. Hmm. That's it, which is we said... If you're trading oil anywhere in the world, it should be done in dollars. There is no other currency. It's like got to be done in dollars. Mm -hmm. And and it's like why? Would, and if anyone even questions it, we go gangster on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and like it's, like it's like somebody raises their hand, right? And they say, "Hey, can't we, you know, trade trade gold for oil or whatever?" It's like, yeah, you can sit down now. Send a bomber. Yeah, <laughs> and right. we bomb. We yeah. bomb them. Yeah. We, we we always have, and so or we now, send the CIA in to uh, oh, overthrow yeah. the yeah, oh, yeah. subvert them. Oh, yeah. we, we, we do not mess around. We have a zero tolerance policy for this. Even mm -hmm. the there was a Saudi Arabia thing that that happened, what two weeks ago, where mm -hmm. the Saudis were talking to the Chinese. The Chinese were like, hey, maybe what's how about Juan for oil, right? They were just talking to them, and we blew up a refinery. And hmm. blamed it on the Iranians, right? Who we're cutting a deal with right now. So the Russians have stepped. <laughs> the Russians have stepped in, and they said, "Rubles for oil." Period. 
And if you don't like that, we'll do gold for oil. We'll do either one of them, right? The, the you know, this is straight out of um, oh, what was that uh, um, movie? Oh crap! Uh, where the kids were the Wolverines and uh, oh, the, uh, Red Dawn. Uh, Red Dawn. Yeah. Jeez, why did that escape my mind? Mm. There was a great line Classic. that Powers Booth said, the pilot, where he goes, he's like, "Why did we do it?" You know, it's like, uh, two biggest kids on the block. They're gonna fight. <laughs> wow. Right? And yeah. and so yeah, Russia has now stepped out and they they're tapping their stick on the ground and they're saying, Petro Ruble, what are you gonna mm. do? And people don't get that the whole reason when you when oil for dollars was that means there's always a demand for dollars and mm -hmm. it's an exclusive demand for dollars. If that exclusivity all of a sudden starts dropping, our inflation it's just right behind it it's gonna get it's gonna get ugly so yeah we're, mm. we're we have to escalate this again i i don't want to end this on a dark note so we'll have to transition to something else but it's like <laughs> look, we don't we don't want to square off with them i mean come on we've been watching movies about this for decades right mm -hmm. the one group you don't want to do this with, mm. the one group that survived the um the ground assault from the third reich right no mm. one else survived the ground assault they did horribly but they did Mm -hmm. uh and and so it's like there there are people sorry last part on this there are people in our country men men of power in our country who would rather fight than let the dollar fall hmm. that's just how it is it's like you know and you think well, what do you mean i'm saying i'll go you, gas is creeping up towards what five bucks a gallon wherever you are maybe yeah i go what if it hits eight what if it hits 12 right no well, and well, some I, say that it would already be there if they weren't dipping into the strategic oil reserve yeah cutting deals with iran yeah exactly. cutting deals with iran it's like, it's like weren't they the bad guys <laughs> even though it's so 1984 there. it's like the enemy's not the enemy but it's always the enemy it's like what in the world dude but we were going, going, Israel's we were going in to mind. talk to them to, to, what? to do a prisoner exchange you remember that yeah the topic of iran like we weren't there to talk to them about oil we were there to talk to them about some American people that were stuck there. Yeah, you know? yeah. it is. <laughs> it is. It is going to get really, really interesting fast. So, mm -hmm. but again, the here's the the thing for all your listeners. You guys get this, right? You're smart. You get this. But the narrative for the general public has to be way more dumbed down because you can't go to the general public and say petrol ruble mm -hmm. means nothing to them. Absolutely means nothing to them. It's like what? <laughs> they, they don't know i have a freaking clue so they have to come up with something else so they're gonna have to say you know russia bad russia did something to us mm -hmm. that's like the oldest one of the oldest tricks in the book and then let's transition go to something else the oldest one of the oldest tricks in the book is you walk up to somebody and you hit them in the back of the head and when they spin around you point at somebody else mm. it's one of the oldest tricks and it always works Mm -hmm. You know, unless the guy is really smart, you know, it always works. And that's what we're, we're kind of waiting to see. You know, yeah. The, the yeah. mainstream has to, has to push this forward and they, you know, they will blame every bit of inflation and all the prices on, on them, you know, and, and turn this, but that's really what it comes down to is, is the oil money. That's, mm -hmm. you know, nine out of every 10 problems involves money. Anyway. Absolutely. What else you got? All evil. I, I wanted to ask you, um, can you give a list, a small list, doesn't have to be uh, anything um, super in-depth, just for like the person that is just starting to awaken, um, a short list of tests or things that they can do sure. at their home, in their yard, you know, just little observations that they can, you know, they, they can start get, get, uh, getting into and, and making to help them along. If they are brand new into this, I would suggest a playlist on my channel called the Flatter Shortlist for New People. That's the first thing I would I would recommend. It is it is literally that. It is the short list of made by all sorts of different people, easy to break down, videos ranging from 5 minutes long to 2 hours long and covering all sorts of different different aspects. That's the first thing I would do uh, is just to get people because again, the, it's the rabbit hole they have to start down first. Before they even start doing tests, they have to get familiar with the content that is out there uh, because there is a lot of content out there. And what I love about Flat Earth it is, is we've gotten to the stage now where it's very overwhelming. 
mm. where they just get hit with so much. Even the documentary, um, when I was sitting, which was not a nuts and bolts documentary, I remember sitting in studio audiences in different parts of the country and Canada. And I remember, you know, watching people around me. And for the first 20 pushing 30 minutes, they didn't even think it was real. They thought it was like a piece of docufiction where they're kind of laughing with the jokes. And it's like, oh, it's one of those, it's one of those fake movies right? where it's a topic, but it's not really a topic. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden it, it dawns on them. You know, there's, there's wave after wave after wave hitting them with different things. There's like, because again, people are suckers for the truth. And it's like, wait a minute, there's something really big and scary on the internet. And I have no idea what it's about. Mm. <laughs> it's like, I've never heard of this. What is happening? <laughs> You know, they, they, there was the, the, the line that I loved most was there was a guy, an editor out of Los Angeles in the film industry, and they decided to, to, to use him as a test bed. He knew nothing about the project at all. And they said, watch this. We're not going to give you any context at whatever. Just watch it. And everybody in the documentary film world knows each other, right? And so they, he, he knew this group and he knew what they have done and other things. And he goes, at the end, he goes, he goes, wow. He goes, you are holding out on me. He goes, what's, where did you get the money for, for this film? I go, what are you talking about? He goes, all those actors, they played it so straight. Hmm. And what he was saying was he didn't believe anyone was real. He hmm. thought it was absolutely fake from beginning to end. Hmm. And, and, they, and they said, no, man, there were no actors. And he, all of a sudden, you know, his eyes, hmm. you know, he's like, hmm. he's like, wait a minute, that conference that happened <laughs> he goes and they go yeah man we were there for three days he's like ah, what you know he, he was just yeah. absolutely blown blown away wasn't by one it. of your wasn't one of the directors or producers of that didn't she make one of those school documentaries before yeah, your documentary she did she made a school documentary she was well granted I remember back when she made it she had to have been like 22 mm -hmm. so what does she know um she made an ant. She thought that they that school thing that happened in was, Connecticut, yeah, in Connecticut was completely uh, as it you know a, as advertised, and that the, the conspiracy people that were you know going against it were cruel and completely mm -hmm. deranged and, and crap like that. So I was a little surprised when she jumped into this project. Uh, however, it, it helped us in the end because no one in the filming of that, no one became a convert. They were, they, they, they circled their wagons and no one would break out of it. They just reinforced each other and they made it all the way to the end and they could not get past the, the, the denial stage. In fact, they even started slipping into the anger stage because it initially was supposed to be a, uh, just a human interest piece. And by the time when they got to the conference, there was, if you watch the documentary, there was a 12 year old kid that asked me a question when I was on stage. Mm -hmm. And that's when, and I did not know, I did not know any of this. In fact, we didn't know until, because there was a director's commentary version that was on iTunes, nowhere else. And so Patricia and I sat down and listened to this and it was boring, it was super boring until they got to that part. And they said, this is when we had to take a stand against flat earth and it's like why and I'm, I'm, I'm like yelling at the screen going, yeah. why? it was because because there were kids involved it's like oh it's all right. fun and games until you're messing with the future it's like oh you guys i mean they never at one never once right. hinted, hinted at that that's crazy and that's what i fear like i have a 15 year old and a 14 year old and since they've been in uh, elementary school i've homeschooled them yeah. And uh, I don't teach them that I know anything as I ought to know it. So their education, you know, they got to figure things out. And one of the things we figure out is we, we can't really know everything and we don't know much. Um, so I'm not preaching at them that they need to be flat earthers or anything like that. But you know that those that are against the truth even being considered, that's the avenue they're going to go. And that's what I felt like with the documentary. If they're trying to find the money line with Netflix... <laughs> They're going to find the line where these kids are our future and we need them to be buying into augmented virtual reality and being in harmony with the bullshit and not being conscious of their environment and how important we are here on earth. You know, and um, I, that's what I feared about that presentation. Well, you know, I had mixed feelings when I went into it because I knew – I, by the way, I sent you guys the plane tracking software. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. I knew that 
everyone in the community was going to hate it. And I knew everyone outside the community was going to find some interest in it. Mm -hmm. However, it worked in our favor because the very first question, whatever film festival they were in, the very first question was asked of the directors and the producers, almost in a, at a hostile level was, are you guys flat earthers? Do you believe in it? Because wow. if they would have said yes, then it would have been a propaganda film. Right. And the way they shot it was, and use a drug reference here, it was, wasn't was pure uncut flat earth. It was mixed in with other stuff. So it was, and I could watch it in the audience. It was like, you know, it was like, oh, flat earther, flat earther, I'm getting anxious. Oh, good, there's a scientist. Yeah, okay. Right, right, right. Fine. Flat earther, flat earther. Uh, hey, look, it's an astronaut. I know that guy. Mm -hmm. And then they do this repeatedly throughout the film to where gotcha. towards the end, they were <clears throat> trying to bridge the gap between science and, and, you know, scientists and us. And it was never, of course, going to happen. And, you know, but the way they shot it, it was very standardized you know hum it was human interest but and they went against us and i felt bad for jaron at the end but at the same time at least he was he admitted his mistakes which was which was good <laughs> which was he 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 broke one of the the cardinal rules of filming which is never do it the first time live ever mm -hmm. it's called dry run for a reason mm -hmm. and he was like oh no no we'll just shoot it live what could go wrong <laughs> right mm. and and then he did it again. That's the part that really cemented it was. <laughs> so he he burned out the laser condenser on the first one he did. And then he calls him back. He's, oh, no, I got I got the condenser thing sorted out. Fly back up here to San Fran. We'll oh. do it again. And then I see. And then, then he had the, the leveling issue. And then mm -hmm. it took him two months. And I'm sorry if, he, if he's listening, but he knows this story very well, <laughs> which was he he goes out during the middle of the day to, you know, he, to drive out to that spot and he, you know, a live stream and he's going and he gets to that spot and he goes, oh, hey, we don't have line of sight. And it's like, you never went there during the day to see if it was <laughs> even level. <laughs> you just <laughs> went out and, go, and, and his excuse was, well, it looked, looked level right. on Google Earth. Google right. Earth had the right elevations. It's well, like, that's where he does so much good research, but it's not like being on the ground. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So he, it, but again, it worked for the end because it was a stinger at the end. And then, and then of course, while it was going in the trailer, they had some scenes which kind of put it into question. But the point was it made the audience feel safe at the end. Right. You know, me, it's, like, it's not a it's not a flat earth world for, for the audience. So they uh, they were fine. In fact, I asked different audience members, I said, because again, by that time they've been so overwhelmed with the topic, they didn't even know what the hell they were looking at. They were just completely glazed over. And I go, So how do you think the movie ended? Like, well, it was bad, right? It's it's not flat, it was bad. I go, Do you even know what that just did? And you know, and they look and they go, No, <laughs> but it was bad, right? And I go, <laughs> I go, Yeah, I go, wow. <clears throat> That's interesting but, but again people had all sorts of questions sorry last story on this which is no, no, when we were at the um uh the ontario film festival uh ontario uh montreal uh, toronto toronto, toronto film festival mm. ontario we uh we were in the audience and it was only the director and the producer and the editor on stage right and at some point and i told i told the director he goes he goes we're we're gonna point you out in the in the audience, by the way, I go. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> that's really, really bad. You don't want to do this. He's oh, it'll be fine. Sure enough, the second he goes, by the way, Mark and Patricia are sitting right over there. You could hear the necks just spinning around. Right? Yeah. Everyone's like, you know, like everyone's yeah. like, what? What the hell? And the next thing you know, within like two, maybe three seconds, somebody said, get them a mic. <laughs> mm. And people, and, and that was it. The the people on stage, you know, the direct, no one wanted to talk to them anymore. Mm. They wanted to talk to Patricia and I. And in fact, at some point they had to cut the whole thing off and they had to kick us out. And then we ended up going to the lobby and they had to kick us out of the lobby because people just kept coming up to us. Now that's wow. going to be a fine line to balance there because uh, you want to draw people in with the information that you have, but you know, you're spoon feeding it at the same time. So it, it's going to be difficult to it, give them that, information, but not too much. That is the, the, the crux, what you just said there, the crux of what I've told people for years, which is, just because you figured it out, mm. everyone does the same thing. The, the the big, awful complaint about Flat Earth I have is once people get it, you know, the whole Matrix thing, they immediately think, oh, I could totally convince somebody over a cup of coffee. 
I, Mark, I've done it before, and I and I have completely embarrassed myself. Uh, yeah, if people yeah. it's like it's like I got I got this, and, and it's like they forgot. It's I don't need this weird time crunch mm. where it's like it took you two weeks or three weeks or maybe even longer. Say minimum two weeks. It's from what I understand two to three weeks now, and you forget all the thing you went through in the two to three weeks, and you mm -hmm. were like, oh yeah, I can totally or or the family. I have to do it every Thanksgiving now. I'd go, do not go to freaking Thanksgiving yeah. and start telling people this. Because in your head, it makes absolute perfect sense, right? Yep. But to them, you hit them with it. They're like, so we're going to commit you to a facility. Because <laughs> yep. yep. seriously, yeah. you'd be better off telling them that you were changing your gender. Yep. Uh, that you have now decided you're going to become a, a big hardcore drug user. Or that you're changing religions. Mm -hmm. In fact, either of those three would be better than mm -hmm. what than opening up with. It's like, yeah, I passed the turkey. I tell you, I'm into flat Earth now. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. is just it. Just goes horrible. So yeah. my wife just shook her head when I said, you know, uh, I, I really don't know how to say this, but I'm pretty sure the Earth is flat. And she just was like, oh, John. And she shook her head and said, please don't, please don't tell people that. Hmm. I'm wondering, I almost did a spit take just then. I'm wondering how many, I'd love to see a collection of hidden cameras of people that did spit takes when they were told <laughs> by someone else. Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, that'd be good. Oh, yeah, flattered, mm -hmm. like, it took me a while to bring it out to my wife. I mean, I got into it in early 2015 and, yeah. and it, I had been into astrology for about seven years beforehand. Yeah. So for me, all the astrology studies I did, as soon as I actually found out about flat earth on instagram there was a guy out of i believe california who had some flat earth t-shirt company and he was on instagram and because i'm in i don't know what it was but somehow he appears on my feed and i'm like dude what the hell are you talking about so i immediately like an asshole comment and i'm like dude what are you talking about why are you talking like this this is clearly not like kosher and then right. he comes back at me and he goes you're just another idiot who won't look into it that's what he says. And I was like, does he know who he's talking to? Like, this guy's full of crap, right? So I immediately go online and I start finding videos. And I found ODD video by then. I found Jaron video. I found Eric Dubay video. So I start looking into this and then I just start considering. And when I looked at all my astrological um, pictures, every single one of them, you're looking at a circular centered flat earth and yeah. you're looking at the sun moon and stars or wandering stars planets whatever you want to call them you're yeah. looking at those as they uh process around uh, a central point yeah. and they do that in different ways and you know i i get into the detail of that but there was no way just at that picture alone as i began to consider that there was no way to change the fact that this fits way better than the globe model with something yeah. that I've been studying for seven years. And then that led me to then just simply look at it for a second and say, well, if all this water here was thawed out by the sun, but all this water here is still ice, then that makes sense that that higher land, the average land of Antarctica being higher than all the other continents, that that yeah. higher frozen, darkened, hardened land would be holding in uh, all the rest oh, yeah. of the water. And it just yeah, yeah, yeah. immediately started to make sense. And I waited yeah. about six months before I got into that with my wife. Um, and I said, I need to understand this completely. My wife is not a, a techie type person. So yeah. for her, I had to come to her in a different point of view. And I really think this is a philosophical argument with most people more than scientific because they sure. never even learned the science of it. That's why it's hard to sit down with a buddy at, uh, with a cup of coffee, even though he may be logical and scientific. He didn't actually digest this scientifically. He had digested it like, oh, the authority told me this. Obviously, it's true. I see it everywhere. There it is. You know, that's as far as you really need to take it. And, yeah. um, you know, I brought it to my wife and others and I've been able to uh, – get quite a few people into it and um nice. but i think a lot of that has to do with the fact that it you have to approach each person where are they in their in their heart and mind because it's really more about that it's a it's completely taking the rug out of everything that they're resting upon but yeah. the funny thing is like mark talked about earlier it's a it's a house of cars they're resting on and they're not getting much rest on it 
So if you think about it right, there's ways of talking to people about it. And it doesn't have to be the scary topic, you know, yeah. although flat earth is scary to everybody. But. The the safe bet is to use the moon landing. That's that's a great litmus test, which is you you basically question, you know, you come up, you side saddle them and you say, hey, what do you think about it? Do you think the Americans went to the moon? And if they all of a sudden, you know, start raising the flag, it's like, God bless those astronauts. Well, then you probably should bring it right. Up yeah do it mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. but if they but if they are like yeah i've always been sketchy about that moon thing then maybe then maybe you can mm -hmm. but that's mm -hmm. usually the the crux if, if they're nasa fans if they're wearing a nasa t-shirt yeah probably shouldn't talk to them yeah but there's so yeah. many people that are disenfranchised post 2020 and these people they can they see some of the the changing of the world they may not understand you know the world that we're imaging here but right. they they feel that and if we talk about somehow how this fits into that on a spiritual level on an emotional level on all these levels of governmental financial it plays <laughs> into it just like your clues expose and um i think even though they may not want to think about this image if we can just throw out little words within the other conversations that we have with people maybe one day they'll be able to look sit down and think about it because that's all it really takes i mean just sure. sitting down and thinking about it but. agreed hmm. mark i had a question for you yeah um if you know how well, Neil Grass Tyson goes on TV pretentiously eating a sandwich and he says a few things, yeah. then he drops the mic, juxtaposed that. Do you have like what uh, you could call like a mic drop bladder um, um, thing that you usually, can say to someone? No, usually I'll, I'll throw the the five the five science questions at them. Yeah, uh, the the ones which is um, long distance photography, gravity versus the vacuum of space, the eclipse shadow is too small, uh, moonlight test, and of course the Van Allen radiation belts. Mm -hmm. I'll hit them with something like that. There is no there is no mic drop drop moment for us because if there was an actual mic drop moment, everyone would be using it. Yeah. Um, because your audience is very very different. What might work on somebody was not going to work on other people. Mm -hmm. So the um, mic drop would be uh, the the scientific experiments. Yes, if if yeah, you're going to use something, usually the stuff I hit people with gets them. It doesn't have to be a mic drop. It's just it stops them in their tracks with a kind of a head scratcher, where it's like, huh. If I can get a physicist to do that and will mm -hmm. you know to just pause and you can see the the, the gears grinding, mm -hmm. that's that's when I that's when I have them. Oh, you've uh, got to check out that allegedly Dave one. That was fantastic. Yeah, I should. He's yeah, Dave's great. I, he I is. love Dave. Mm -hmm. Dave's done a lot of great work over on, in the UK side of things. Guys, by the way, we we you know we're also it's not just an English speaking thing. You know, I can only because I only speak English. You know, we we did conferences in mostly English speaking countries. Uh, but if you plug in flat Earth and you convert it into another language, you know, just the term, and throw that back into Google. Mm -hmm. We're everywhere. In fact, I did a, a little quick consulate, you know, little video where I was showing them uh, different languages. You know, I didn't understand what the hell they were saying, but you could tell, you know, Flat Earth was in the background. Uh, we, we've resonated very well in, in just about every, everywhere, which is why the, the Flat Earth Friend Finder from, uh, from the app is done as, as well as it has. That's, that's because really fun. Because truth, truth cannot be denied. That's nope. Why, yeah, that's why okay. It's and again, people Mark. get it. Sorry, uh, just real quick, I should have probably discussed this with you before, but um, yeah. what is the time situation for you? Uh, another 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, okay. I just have, yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding me? Uh, and real quick, this, this is my last question. You guys can take it from here if you'd like, but in behind the curve, what kind of light do you think that they portrayed you in? And did they include everything that you had said? <laughs> okay first um they they the power of editing they knew because i was with them for seven months they knew just about oh, wow. everything about me that you could think and mm. they included not they <sighs> there's something in the media that's known as the narrative mm -hmm. and the and it changes depending on what you're what you're doing but when they get locked into a narrative they want to they paint you the way they want to paint you doesn't matter what the reality is. So there were a lot of things they left about about my backstory, which was fine. Um, I, I get that. Um, but at the same time, they there's some things they can't get around. There was, uh, uh, I'll, I'll say one of the, I don't know if it's flattering, but it was interesting. There was a, a reporter 
in uh, New Zealand, I think. And he he wrote this thing, and he goes, he goes, Mark has a goofy warmth that instantly disarms people. And I'd never heard that before. No one had ever said that, and I and never heard that in my life. And I went, huh? And so I started asking people, like, a goofy warmth, goofy warmth, is that, is that a thing? <laughs> and, they, and they go, oh yeah, I guess it is. Because it's it's tough to get mad at me. I mean, I've had people, you know, that should be angry at me, but but again, I I just kind of roll with it. Mm -hmm. um, so they they the only thing what was inaccurate uh, from the movie inaccurate was they painted the relationship between Patricia and I as a current thing that mm -hmm. it was happening that like they were they were there during the whole thing. Absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. uh, we Patricia and I had done our thing at least a year earlier, and we were just kind of you know we we were friends and we were still doing our thing before she quit everything because the trolls found her mm -hmm. which is again the different i can release my personal information phone number email you know right. mailing address that's no problem women yeah. to this day cannot do that yeah right um as far as the information i'll give you one example of the things they cut out because you have to whittle down seven months into a hundred minutes and it's tough to do and i i don't get, blame them but at the same time anything that was even remotely close to accurate on our part scientific information that should have been shown mm -hmm. i'll give you a little one when we were at the kennedy space center which they showed part of it when we were at the kennedy space center patricia and i walking around there was this image the the robert simmons image where it's heavily photoshopped you know it, it, it is photoshopped because it has to be that was there a lot of people don't know this that was actually there on a it was mounted on the wall of the inside of the space shuttle that they had outside. 2D or 3D? 2D. It was it was the exact okay. image. The exact, the, exact, image. the exact image. Got it. And I was and and Patricia and I recognized it immediately. And it's like, and there was no plaque underneath it, no credit, but because it was a NASA engineer that had that had designed it, they own the rights to it. Right. And I'm sitting there in front of the camera, I'm going, look. You know, it was blown up, so it was easy to spy. It's like, look, here's the cloning tool on the southern end, and there's an, there's articles and that that have shown he know you know he wow. admitted how he built it, and I go, mm -hmm. look, this is a perfect example. This is at NASA's facility, and they're showing it like it's a picture of the Earth from space, and it isn't. It's absolutely <laughs> fabricated from from minute one, wow. and the director was having none of it. <laughs> yeah, he was like he was like nope not going to not going to show wow. that at all Ugh. similar to so there were lots of things that was not the, the first time one other one which was um the national geographic team when we were at the salton sea when they, their whole thing was they were going to take balloons and they were going to from nine miles away and raise them up until we could see them mm -hmm. right but the thing was we saw them on the beach <laughs> and you know with our cameras because we had p you know nikon cameras we're, we're shooting them in fact, we because they, their camera guys were having a hard time trying to find them, mm. uh, you know, because, you know, all the terrain looked dissimilar. And once they realized that we we could see them, so, you know, you could tell that that was going to be scrapped. And yeah. so when it finally aired on television, that whole section never happened. Wow. So, yeah, there was all sorts of fun things in the documentary. Out of all the, the long distance photography things or the laser experiments that we had going, like they knew full of well the um, uh, the Lake Balaton experiments over there we did in Europe, you know, with, with Guinness, I think. And nobody, they didn't want to do that. They, they, the narrative, they wanted to spin it a certain way. And I actually, I'd love to have been a fly on the wall when they were editing all that out. So, hmm. yeah, again, uh, it worked, worked out in the end. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, when you're in a, a film like that, a documentary, yeah. is that uh, like if that was a, a Hollywood type production, yeah. you would receive royalties, right? <laughs> yes. So is that something that, that you're financially tied to, if you don't mind me asking? No, no. Documentaries. <laughs> the only truthful thing about to... documentaries is nobody gets paid. <laughs> in fact, it is a <laughs> low budget low budget process um these guys were running on shoestrings and vapors mm. um which is the only reason they didn't change it they could have they could have they, by the time they figured out how much they hated us the film was pretty much done they were already at the conference it's like we don't have enough money to go back and reshoot some of this stuff you don't do reshoots in documentaries so no mm. we we didn't make we didn't make a dime off of that in fact they had no faith God, talk about, I mean, God, they were so pessimistic. I, I was actually questioning at one point why they were doing it at all. Because they're saying, yeah, we're never going to get, if you don't know anything about the film industry, 
you there's tons and tons of people that make movies mm. but almost 99 percent of them you never are ever going to see mm-hmm. so what happens is if you don't have a buyer a studio that's backing you right away you have to sell it you have to go to the film festivals so like the toronto film festival three thousand films were submitted out mm. of those they pick a hundred to show and then out of those maybe 10 get ranked we were always in the top 10 and top two win awards and then uh, the, there's studio execs that will maybe buy right they're saying first off we're never going to get in the film festivals which wasn't true we got into every single film festival that we applied yeah. to of course we would yeah. and they wow. said well it's never going to get purchased it's never going to purchase and immediately amazon and itunes and youtube red and they all picked it up mm-hmm. and then netflix was the last one to pick it up <laughs> but because netflix was so huge they they picked it up um, and then, then did it. So no, I didn't, didn't, didn't make a freaking dime off of that. Um, the, for something, but I mean, I did make money off like the, the, the television commercial in Australia. That was a, a great thing, but not because of what you might think. It's like, why the hell would you do a television commercial in Australia? It wasn't because flat earth was so big that it was like, Oh, we, we just did that. It was because they were members of that company at the highest level that were ours. <laughs> Ah, yeah, there you go. Man, I didn't know this till I got down there because I was walking around and because they were, if you've watched the full <laughs> campaign, there were different Americans that were, that were there, right? And like, right. like beauty queens from like South Carolina, Miss South Carolina was there and I'm going, wow, you actually flew down to South Carolina. It's like, no, mate, she, she's Australian, <laughs> I know, terrible accent, but I'm like, wait, I go, all these people are Australian. It's like, and I go, I go, let me see the sheet. Right. And then I looked at the call sheet. I was the only person there that wasn't an actor. Oh, man. And so I, I had to ask him, I go, mm. why am I here? <laughs> exactly. You could just pretend to be a, you know, make up a flat earther. You don't need me. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's like, oh, those guys over there are responsible. And so I, you know, I, and the owners of the company and sure enough, these guys are like, oh yeah, so I wanted to, wanted to meet you and do stuff. But again, they were shy. 90% of our community is still in the closet. Yeah. They wanted me there to do stuff, but they weren't mm. going to admit it to anyone that, you know, and I've talked to, you probably heard me say other things. I've talked to celebrities and captains of industry and stuff. They're like, oh yeah, totally with you. Yeah, don't mention my name. There was a guy from, um, I'm not going to screw it up for David, because uh, David knows him, um, from like the Navy Seal- SEALs television show. Yep. And he was on, um, he was at the, the Shane Dawson shoot, where we were there with Shane Dawson's brother shooting a conspiracy thing. And he... Uh, he was there watching us the entire time. He was there in the background. And, but because, you know, he was a mid range actor, you know, he just signed a new contract. He came up to me after he goes, I was never here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've heard that too many times, you know, for, you know, Do I, you I don't mind the power. I don't, I don't mind using Kelsey Grammer's name nowadays. Cause it's been a few years, oh, there you but, go. Yep. but that same, same sort of thing where mm-hmm. he was like, you know, there's tons of people in the entertainment industry because they're very open-minded about mm-hmm. stuff. And they're like, oh, yeah, totally. But, yeah, they're not coming out of the closet anytime soon because, well, we saw what happened to people like, I don't know, Kyrie Irving. Yeah. Can you imagine? Wow, it's unbelievable. Well, you, you always hear these days, like, the it's so defamatory that it's, they pair, like, uh, flat earth, flat earther with, um, like, anti-vaxxer. It's, like, it's such a... Uh, yeah, which, by the way, wouldn't, in that case, wouldn't be that far off. Yeah, I know. <laughs> most, most of the people in that community are the other are the community. But, yeah, you're right. But it's they almost do it in, like, a malignant, uh, you know. I like get they, it. Yeah, which is what you, know. you can't get any worse, right? right. Flat Earth is, is, is about as bad as you can go. It's like but reprobate. I, what, I, what I try to tell people is, like, look, I don't care. As long as the term keeps getting thrown out there. I don't I don't care. People, you know, make fun of the, the commercial I did because the, the campaign was called foolproof. It's like if Mark, if Mark can get it, anyone can get it, right? <laughs> yeah. Then but at the same time, I go, look, I don't even care if you tied me to a chair and threw pies at my face. Mm. I go, as long as I get to say flat earth on camera. In fact, at one point there they said, Would you be willing to say that it's a globe earth on camera? And I said, Nope. Mm-hmm. No Defeats chance. The whole purpose. Yeah, no right. chance no whatsoever. Even if it's a joke, I'm not gonna say it. Mm-hmm. I go, but you can do anything you want to me on camera as long as I get to smile and say flat earth, I'll do it. <laughs> which is why, we, you know, we're a fairly good humored bunch, which is why when Logan Paul screwed up our um, our Denver conference and then when Jimmy Kimmel came in and did the Dallas conference mm-hmm. uh, and and little little things like people don't remember, like during the first conference in, um, in Raleigh, Howard Stern sent a team. 
Oh, that's wow. how you knew that we were, you know, and he's about as professional as troll as you can get. Sure. So anyway, it's, All right. but I wouldn't change a thing right now. The journey has been fantastic and awesome. uh, it is, it's going to get nothing but well provided, you know, everything's well, let's put it this way. We're going to keep trying to keep doing what we're doing. I, what the rest of the world does. Uh, don't, don't know right now. Hey, Mark, yeah. have you looked into a uh, sidereal time? And do you have an understanding of how the basically the constellated stars move as a wheel, like all together? Do you understand how that works? I have not looked into it that much. I mean, I've looked into the general things like precession and, and you know, I've mm -hmm. looked at enough time lapse footage, but no, I've not. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'd love to talk to you about it sometime. It's, it's right. very interesting because. The, the constellated stars, whether you look at them as dots or lines, whatever, they're dots in the sky, they yeah. move as one fixed, you know, even Google, if you Google it, it will say it, it appears to be fixed, you know, the wheel of stars. Right. Right, and right. then within those, that, that constellated, the 88 constellations, there's a circle of 12, and that circle is where the moon, sun, and planets are always within that belt. It's a 16-degree right. belt, right? And when we study how it moves, the wheel moves once a day, but the planets, they move within that belt, within that wheel. And they don't move once a day. They move very slowly. Most of them, right? The moon right. moves the quickest, right. but they actually have, uh, this is why the sun, when it's over the Tropic of Capricorn, it doesn't yeah. require it to move faster than when it's on the Tropic of Cancer, even though it's closer in a smaller circle, because right. the sun's only moving one degree a day. It's the sky that's moving, right? You see, once a time a day, and this yep. even agrees with the globe model. But not many people on either side have come to the study of it. I guess I'd say because I've been talking about this since I got into flat Earth, and there's still very few people who have touched on it. And because of that, we still say a lot of things that are not accurate, even though the point of what we're saying is true. Um, the way we're explaining it, because the sun is not moving uh, every day around the Earth the sky is moving and the sun is within that sky. And right. then within that, the sun has its own procession, which takes one year. The sun takes one year to make a full rotation in that belt. But right. that belt is moving around the earth every 24 hours. So that's that's kind of a thing that I think as a flat earth community, uh, one of my ideas of this podcast was like, we're in growing pains. Maybe the censorship isn't stopping us, but we're still in these growing pains. And right. I think if we can come to the harmony of like, you know, looking at the sky as that precise, purposeful clock that I think it is, we we get a, you know, even though I think geology is how we spell out the flat earth, not astronomy, but nevertheless, when we do look at the sky, um, it really does move in perfect, precise patterns. Everything on the same plane, everything in the same, you know, each one of those stars or suns or planets has their own pattern, their own um uh, pace and it never changes. Those things are always the same. And this is that universe that we have. This one verse is just this constant cyclical changing, you know, thing. Send me, send me some links on it. I, I, I get it. I, I have heard some of the stuff you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You, you're a really good three-dimensional thinker. And, but the problem is the general public, for the most part, you're rare in that regard. There are mm -hmm. a lot of people, don't forget, there's a lot of, not the audience, I'm sure, wonderful, enlightened beings that are out there. <laughs> the rest of them, mouth-breathing troglodytes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's like, I just think, like, it's interesting because Johnny was talking about doing tests. And one yeah. of the things that's very interesting is just learning the moon cycle. Just to yeah. do that alone, uh, that's what I started studying 10 years ago, 15 years ago, was just the moon. I just start to every day be conscious of what was happening with the moon. That's it. Wasn't trying yeah. to find anything. Just let me see what happens with this. And then that le led me to realize that the backdrop of the sun, moon, and stars is always the same. And as I watch that backdrop, depending on where the every night those things appear to be as they process, I can see how they're actually moving. So in reality, the sun, moon, and planets are moving counterclockwise to the clockwise rotation that they're in. Right. And this is actually what's happening, and it's visible. You can see it with your naked eye watching the moon day by day. If you go for an hour or two hours each night and you check out where the moon is, you'll see it's moving those 14 degrees away from where it was. Uh, and that's going this way, you know. Um, 
things right. like that. Uh, I think we can learn a lot from, you know, I, astrology. I agree. And well, not necessarily time. in that ethereal way of the meanings and this. And I'm into all that too. Believe me, I, I'm into all that kind of stuff. I've been studying a long time. I'm oh, into wow. how it works with the spiritual aspect of things. It's, like a, it's but, crazy. <laughs> but depart from the spiritual aspects, the scientific aspect, just learning the degrees of how they move. Um, it can tell us a lot, man. I mean, you go into a planetarium, a place for the planets. It's always a flat, rounded room with a hemisphere. And the, on the on the underside of the hemisphere, we have the projection of light. So it's like these things teach us whether we want to learn it or not. That's another topic. Like you said, there are those that don't want to learn it. But right. I think there are growing numbers of people who do want to learn it. And huh? um, we can hit them from a lot of different aspects. None better than the spacesuit, you know, because I agree – to have a, a, you know, to contradict the second law of ther thermodynamics yeah. is a huge, huge thing that almost every average person has some concept of. And they're like, OK, that doesn't quite make all the sense. How does air press upon something when there's nothing pressing for it to press upon? Right. I mean, yep. Just absolutely kinda makes sense. Groovy. Well said, John. Mark, listen, can I uh, just say you didn't have to call me back and you didn't have to be on the podcast, but you did anyways. And seriously, we all appreciate it. And we'd love to have you back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and not even just to flat Earth. I can tell you're an educated man, and I would love to. We would all just love to just have a, a good podcast about a good conversation. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. So, I'm I'm well versed in a bunch of topics, so okay. happy to. Mark, is there anything you would like to plug, um, promote? Uh, yeah. Anything that you're yeah, into yeah, right yeah. now? Um, just if you want to find my stuff, just type in Flat Earth Mark into YouTube. Uh, you could probably do it on Google and find my stuff. Uh, I mean, the Netflix documentary is out there. You'll eventually get to that. There's some books on Amazon. You might get to that. i got a podcast on, on TFR. But Flat Earth Mark will start you in the right place. Fantastic. Okay. Not to be awesome. confused with Flat Earth Dave. You don't want to type in that. I hate that. <laughs> okay. Well, Mark, thank you again, man. Honestly, you didn't have to, but you did anyways. It was a blessing to have you on. And uh, nothing but success in the future. And hopefully we can get more people on the topic. All right. Well, Indeed. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a good rest of your day. And I'm going to go out and probably mow the lawn. All right. Thanks, I'm going to talk to you, Mark. Have a great day, sir. Bye, guys. Thank you. See you.